Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody had a really good lunch break. We will now continue our council meeting and start with agenda item 10, the general debate. And I will invite statements first from member states, beginning with ministers. And indeed, we do have ministers, uh, and not so few, joining us this afternoon, which is really great, followed by regional groups and then observers. I would like to remind speakers of the time allocated for statements under this agenda item, which is five minutes for ministers and regional groups, three minutes for member states, and one and a half minute for observers. And to ensure the smooth running of this meeting, I, as I have said this morning, would like to request to all those taking the floor speak at a reasonable pace to allow accurate interpretation, in particular if delegates are participating online. And in all cases, to ensure accurate and clear interpretation, copies of all statements should be submitted in advance by all delegations to the meeting secretariat before opening of the relevant morning or afternoon session. Please also note that the full text of statements given to the secretariat will then also be published on the IOM website unless the meeting secretariat is advised otherwise. And I will now start with our list of speakers and I have the honor to give the floor um, to Her Excellency Ms. Anna Maria Mogetti, the Minister of Labour and Home Affairs of Botswana. She's joining us online. Excellency, you have the floor. I've just been informed that there's been some technical challenges, so we will continue to work on them. And uh, this means we will move to the second speaker on my list, which is Ms. Elizabeth Campbell, the Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration of the United States. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. As we gather today, as governing body members of a UN humanitarian agency, let me begin by recognizing the UN's essential role in the humanitarian response effort in Gaza and expressing our deepest condolences to the families of civilians and of the 109 UN staff who have lost their lives in this conflict. It has been nearly two months since Hamas carried out a barbaric terrorist attack against Israel, an attack we unequivocally condemn. As a result of Hamas's actions, many innocent people have suffered in both Israel and Gaza. Many families are grieving. The United States remains committed to ensuring civilians and civilian infrastructure are, protect are protected in this conflict in accordance with international humanitarian law. We are intensifying our collective efforts to deliver life-saving humanitarian assistance to those impacted by this conflict. We are pleased to see more aid is reaching the people of Gaza who are in dire need of assistance. But much more aid, especially fuel, is needed urgently. The United States continues to believe the most viable path, indeed the only path to peace, is through the creation of a Palestinian state. That is the only guarantor of a secure and democratic Israel, the only guarantor of Palestinians realizing their legitimate aspirations to live in a state of their own, enjoying equal measures of security, 
and prosperity, and the only way to end this violence once and for all. Madam Chairperson, at a time when the world is bearing witness to unprecedented migration and forced displacement, the work of this body here to support IOM has never been more important. The United States believes a range of regular migration pathways represent an important opportunity for vulnerable migrants and host countries. We are pleased to have launched the Safe Mobility Initiative earlier this year, expanding lawful pathways to the United States and helping refugees and migrants avoid the risks associated with onward movement. This initiative facilitates expedited refugee processing and access to complementary pathways, including humanitarian parole, family reunification, community-based sponsorship, and labor pathways. Nearly 5,000 individuals have been referred for potential resettlement to the United States, and nearly 8,000 individuals have been screened for other lawful pathways. The United States recognizes the impact of climate change to migrants and appreciates IOM's leadership in this area. With IOM, we co-hosted a call to action event on climate mobility and development at this year's Africa Climate Summit in Kenya, where we announced $4 million for IOM to improve data on the impact of climate change on human mobility and provide support to displaced persons in Kenya adversely affected by climate change. President Biden recently hosted the U.S. Pacific Islands Forum Summit in Washington, D.C., building upon our commitment to help Pacific Islands adapt to and manage the impacts of climate change. We are also one of the largest contributors to the multi-partner trust fund, supporting climate change initiatives in line with the Global Compact on Migration. These and other significant climate initiatives represent our shared belief that adaptation and resilience are critical to addressing the effects of climate change. Director General Pope, the United States proudly supports your thoughtful leadership with special appreciation for your strategic vision and transparent direction. In 2023, we increased our unearmarked funding to over $10 million as a testament to our shared vision around data capacity building, program oversight, and climate mobility. Finally, as IOM develops comprehensive solutions for vulnerable people on the move, we value you, value you as an essential operating partner and commend IOM staff globally in providing life-saving humanitarian assistance. The United States remains committed to promoting strong internal justice mechanisms and management controls, prioritizing reform so IOM is well-funded and efficiently managed, and encouraging IOM's recruitment of a diverse and inclusive workforce. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to Her Excellency, Ms. Beatrice Atim Otwong, the Minister of Water Environment of Uganda. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Esteemed Chair, Director General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we extend our warm congratulations to Ambassador Katharina Stach for, of Germany on assuming the chairmanship of the Council and to the vice chairpersons, permanent representatives from the Republic of Korea and Peru. We will also welcome permanent representative of Tunisia as the rapporteur. We would like to extend a warm welcome and congratulations to Ms. Amy Pope for taking up the role of Director General. We look forward to working with her and are confident that under her leadership, the IOM will continue to make significant strikes in addressing the complex challenges of migration. Distinguished delegates, Uganda is a nation deeply impacted by the critical 
intersection of climate change and human mobility in our region. The East and the Horn of Africa, to which we belong, grapples with the undeniable reality that climate change is a primary catalyst for human displacement. Uganda, as affirmed by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, currently stands as the third largest refugee hosting country globally and the largest in Africa, sheltering over 1.5 million refugees. This influx is in part attributed to environmental challenges in the East and the Horn of Africa, including prolonged droughts, desertification, flash floods, and land degradation challenges that are poised to intensify with the looming threat of climate change. In, in navigating this crisis, Uganda's open door approach to refugee and migrant settlement translates viewing refugees and migrants merely as humanitarian obligations. Instead, we recognize the potential of those of these settlements to bring about improved service, services and infrastructure that benefits both the refugees and our resident communities. Refugees and migrants in Uganda have been integrated into the host communities where they fully participate in the economy and benefit from our social services. Addressing these multifaceted challenges demands substantial budgets and the establishment of a coherent regulatory framework. In expressing our gratitude, we commend the International Organization for Migration for its pivotal role in responding swiftly to global crises, providing life-saving aid, protection, and movement support to those in transit. The operational strength of IOM is ad in addressing sudden disasters and contributing to broader humanitarian effort is truly recommendable. We appreciate IOM's support for the Kampala Declaration on Climate and migration, emphasizing the critical importance of recognizing the nexus between the climate change and human mobility. As we engage in discussion on climate change, we must inherently include consideration of human displacement. We salute the IOM for its pivotal role in addressing diverse challenges and implementing impact, impactful interventions within my country, Uganda. The collaboration with IOM has significantly contributed to the well-being and resilience of Ugandan communities. IOM has done commendable work in refugee settlements, ensuring safe relocation, particularly for refugees from South Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo. Furthermore, tailored emergency preparedness and response initiative under IOM's commitment to mitigating displacement impact, impacts. Uganda applauds the IOM's dedicated to migration health, labor migration, and human development, fostering sustainable well-being. Migrant protection and assistance, including counter-trafficking, showcase paramount efforts. Transition and recovery alongside immigration and border management demonstrates holistic commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, Uganda affirms its commitment to working with IOM 
and other member states to address the manifest challenges of migration. We believe that through collective action and shared responsibility, we can ensure safe, orderly, and regular migration that respects the rights and dignity for all, for God and my country. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to Her Excellency, Ms. Anna Maria Mocchetti, the Minister of Labor and Home Affairs of Botswana. Your Excellency, you have the floor. She's muted. Excellency, we cannot hear you. There seems to be still a technical prob problem. Uh, we saw that uh, your microphone was unmuted. Um, let's I just have a look at the technical colleagues. Shall we try again or let's move on? I can't see you. Okay, we will wait and try to solve it, otherwise we will move on. We will con okay, so we will continue with the next uh, speaker on the list, with, which is His Excellency Mr. Vujul Hoseinov, the Chief State Migration Service of Azerbaijan, Excellency, you have the floor, and Excellency is also joining us online. Dear Madam Director General, distinguished delegates, I am pleased to join this session of the IOM Council, which serves as a comprehensive platform to share our views and concerns related to issues of migration, as well as highlight our activities in migration governance at the national level. First, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the members of the Bureau on assuming their positions. I would like also to congratulate Ms. Amy Pop on her election as the Director General of the organization and wish her every success in this important and challenging mission. Today, displacement dimensions of human mobility caused by various factors pose multiple challenges in protecting the human rights of migrants, facilitating their integration, and maximizing the benefits of migration for development. Despite the measures taken to address these challenges, there is still much work to be done to achieve our common goals. Unfortunately, forced displacement resulting from conflicts and inequalities continues to be a major factor in worsening the human rights situation and limiting migrants' access to basic services necessary for their livelihoods. Azerbaijan is one of the countries which faced these challenges and has been addressing the issues related to the protection of human rights of over a million IDPs and refugees for more than 30 years. Starting from 2020, with the liberation of its occupied territories and restoration of its integrity, territorial integrity, Azerbaijan restored rights of IDPs to return their homelands, which also opened a new page in terms of internal migration dynamics. The restoration, reintegration, and sustainable settlement processes have already begun in these territories. But the process of ensuring safe and dignified return as well as sustainable settlement also has enormous challenges. Among these challenges, the most important one is the extensive contamination of these territories with landmines, which hampers mobility within those areas. Recognizing the importance of this issue also at the global level, the government of Azerbaijan has made mine action one of its national priorities and is also setting a specific national sustainable development goal on the mining. We are actively advocating for mine action to be adopted as the 18th SDG and calling for support from the member states for this endeavor with a view to address one of the impeding factors negatively affecting free mobility. Regretfully, 
The global situation regarding integration also doesn't differ much from the human rights situation of migrants. False narratives surrounding migration, often fueled by discrimination, xenophobia, and anti-migrant sentiments, overshadow the economic and cultural contributions of migrants to their host societies. In this regard, I am pleased to note that Azerbaijan sets a positive example with its commitment to the values of multiculturalism, diversity, and inclusion, which are also contributing factors for migrants to choose our country as their new home. In the, it's very unfortunate that migration is often perceived as a matter of security, which clearly undermines the development potential of this phenomenon. Therefore, in order to unlock the development potential of migration, we should focus on extending safe and legal pathways, simplifying administrative procedures for facilitated mobility, as well as promoting partnerships which are crucial for growth and prosperity. In this regard, Azerbaijan also attached great importance to strengthening links between migration and development, improves its national policies in this direction, and takes active part in global discussions, such as Global Forum on Migration and Development. We are a member of Forum Steering Group and engaged in preparatory consultations ahead of its summit as one of the roundtable co-chairs. Using the opportunity, I would also like to thank IOM for facilitating global discussions in migration governance for the purpose of harnessing migration as a driving force for development. When talking about addressing challenges and finding solutions, now we don't have to look far, as existing global compact for migration provides solid basis for us to take necessary actions. However, if we want to attain tangible outcomes, we should not just be satisfied with formally joining the GCM. We should focus on continuous implementation of its principles and objectives. In this sense, I am proud to note that Azerbaijan is a GCM champion country and actively advocates for the implementation of this document through targeted actions at all levels. We have redoubled our efforts in realizing GCM principles and objectives nationally, organized several capacity building and awareness raising activities involving various stakeholders at regional and global levels. We are also privileged to chair the Almaty process until the end of next year with technical support from IOM where we have identified the promotion of the GCM as one of our priorities and have already organized a GCM talk with the UN Network on Migration. As in previous years, we are committed to actively contributing to the upcoming regional review process on the implementation of the GCM. Finally, I would like to reiterate that Azerbaijan will continue mobilizing all its efforts to contribute to the global discussions around migration with a view to find better solutions and stands ready to support efforts and initiatives that will help us to reach our common goals. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our next speaker is His Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Mobini de Grodi, the Deputy Minister of the Interior and Head of the National Organization for Migration of Iran. Excellency, you have the floor. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Khanum Reis. آلی جنوان وزرا و نمایندگان محترم حضور در نشست 114 همه شورای سازمان بین المللی مهاجرت برای این جانب مایه خورسندی است از این فرصت استفاده نموده و مراتب تبریک خود را به خانم امی پوپ به عنوان اولین مدیر کل زن در سازمان بین المللی مهاجرت اعلام می نماید در ابتدا لازم میدانم به مسئله فلسطین اشغالی به عنوان یکی از کانونهای اصلی و قدیمی مهاجرت و آوارگی در جهان اشاره کنم در زمان کنونی جلوگیری از کشتار انسانهای بیگناه و مبارزه با ریشه های آوارگی و مهاجرت اجباری شهروندان فلسطین به ویژه در غزه مسئولیت جامعه بین المللی است خانم رئیس همچنان که آگاه هستید بحران‌های مهاجرتی ناشی از عوامل مختلف از جمله تحولات سیاسی، تغییرات اقلیمی در کشورهای همسایه جمهوری اسلامی ایران به شدت کشورم را تحت تاثیر قرار داده است. در بیش از چهار دهه گذشته ایران میزبان چند میلیون پناهنده و آواره بوده است که به دلیل مداخلات نظامی کشورهای فرامنطقه‌ای 
در افغانستان و عراق خانه و کاشانه خود را ترک کرده به سوی کشورم سرازیر شدند مشکلات امنیتی و اقتصادی و محدودیت های همچون من دانش آموزان و دختران از تحصیل از جمله عوامل مهاجرت اطباع افغانستانی به کشورهای همسایه در سودای زندگی و معیشت بهتر بوده است از سوی دیگر در پی وقوع زلزله در هرات در هرات افغانستان در اکتبر سال 2023 و به دلیل شرایط نامناسب افراد تحت تاثیر زلزله تعداد زیادی از شهروندان افغانستانی درون آن کشور آواره شده و بسیاری از آنان به ایران سرازیر شده است. جمهوری اسلامی ایران علا رقم مشکلات و مسائل عدیده خدمات مختلف آموزشی، بهداشتی، درمانی، فرهنگی و انواع خدمات دیگر را بدون تبعیض برای مهاجران و آوارگان خارجی فراهم نموده است. ثبت نام بیش از 700 هزار دانش آموز در سال تحصیلی در مدارس دولتی دسترسی مهاجران خارجی به سیستم آموزش عالی و تحصیل در دانشگاه ها پوشش رایگان بیمه سلامت برای 130 هزار نفر از پناهندگان آسیب پذیر در سال 2023 توانمندسازی مهاجران از طریق آموزش های فنی و حرفه‌ای و دسترسی به یارانه های مستقیم و پنهان بخش کوچکی از خدمات کشورم به پناهندگان بوده است ایران تا کنون به مراتب بیش از سهم خود در میزبانی و حمایت از پناهندگان مشارکت داشته است لذا شایسته است تقسیم منصفانه این مسئولیت بین المللی مورد توجه جامعه بین الملل قرار گیرد خانم رئیس جمهوری اسلامی ایران از تلاش سازمان های بین المللی از تلاش های سازمان بین المللی مهاجرت و تداوم مشارکت های آن سازمان برای رسیدگی به بحران های طولانی شده به ویژه در افغانستان کشوری که بر اساس گزارش های سازمان ده ها هزار نفر از مردمش به تازگی آواره شدند قدردانی می نماید چند دهه میزبانی سبب تحمیل هزینه های هنگفت اقتصادی اجتماعی فرهنگی و حتی امنیتی بر کشورم شده و فشار بسیار زیادی را بر جامعه میزبان تحمیل نموده است که نتیجه آن کاهش تاب آوری جامعه میزبان جهت میزبانی از آوارگان است از سوی دیگر میزان کمک های جامعه المللی به ایران جهت رسیدگی به وضعیت مهاجران بسیار ناچیز بوده و کمتر از یک درصد از هزینه های میزبانی را پوشش می دهد. حضار محترم، حجوم گسترده مهاجران در کنار عدم توضیح عادلانه بار میزبانی از پناهندگان و آوارگان خدمات کشورم به این جمعیت را تحت تاثیر قرار داده است. علاوه بر آن اقدامات قهر آمیز یک جانبه شرایط را پیچیدتر کرده است تحریم های یک جانبه نه تنها تمایل حامیان مالی برای مشارکت در رسیدگی به مهاجران در ایران را به صورت منفی تحت تاثیر خود قرار داده بلکه اجرای برنامه های حمایتی جمهوری اسلامی را نیز با مخاطره مواجه کرده است از این رو جمهوری اسلامی جمهوری اسلامی ایران ظرفیت پذیرش آوارگان جدید را ندارد و در صورت عدم مسئولیت پذیری جامعه بین‌المللی جهت حمایت از پناهندگان و آوارگان در کشورم بخش عمده آنها به کشورهای اروپایی مهاجرت خواهد نمود در پایان از برگزاری این نشست و ایجاد فرصت گفتگو و همفکری بین دولت‌ها و سازمان‌های بین‌المللی قدردانی می‌نمایم از توجه شما متشکرم. تانکیو. Thank you. And I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Jabulo Nsusa, the Deputy Minister of Home Affairs of South Africa. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. South Africa congratulates the permanent representative of Germany. Ambassador Katrina Stech on her election as chairperson of the 114th session of the IOM Council and wishes her well in facilitating the work of the Council. 
We further wish to congratulate Ambassador Dr. Lansana Berry for, her, for his leadership in facilitating the work of the Council for the past year. On behalf of the South African government, I wish to congratulate you, Ms. Amy Pope, on your appointment as the new Director General and becoming the first woman to occupy this position since establishment of the IOM 74 years ago. We reassure you of South Africa's continued support. South Africa aligns itself with the statement to be delivered on behalf of the Africa Group. My delegation welcomes and supports the Director General's report as it clearly outlines her vision and priorities for the IOM during her tenure, particularly its efforts to align with the Global Compact for safe, orderly and regular migration. We further welcome all discussions aimed at addressing the adverse driving forces of migration, including protracted and intensified conflicts. The adverse effects of climate change and food insecurity as underscored within the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on climate change. As such, we agree that migration requires not only a comprehensive state-led approach as supported by the relevant UN-related organizations, but must also be considered by academia, the private sector, and civil society. We support the Director General's proposal to increase legal pathways given its alignment with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Global Compact for Migration. South Africa has over the years created regular pathways for different nationalities within our country. Notwithstanding, we maintain that responsibility sharing should be equally carried by sending, transiting and receiving states. In this regard, South Africa emphasizes the need to address fundamental causes of migration by addressing challenges at local, national, regional and international levels. This can be achieved through international cooperation. Our principled position is that collectively we should urgently address adverse drivers of forced migration and displacements. This is include climate-induced migration instability, inequality, poverty, and other related structural deficiencies that compel people to leave their countries of origin. As part of developing adaptation and resilience strategies and in order to give effect to the Disaster Management Act of 2002, South Africa has developed the Disaster Management Plan for implementation at the local government level that assess priority disaster areas. Through these assessment measures to prevent pre prepare and mitigate disaster risk inclusive of climate changes are identified. Madam Chairperson, it is therefore the resolve of my delegation that if these and similar measures are to be consolidated, aligned and resourced across regions will make a significant impact in supporting states to develop standby capabilities to respond to these emerging forms of disasters. The IOM together with the UN bodies and agencies as well as other relevant stakeholders should play a significant role in supporting states to ensure purpose-built standby capacities to minimize the impact of displacement, damages to infrastructure, and loss of life. Similar, similarly, partnerships with private sector who are the main beneficiaries of migration through critical skills schemes, amongst others, should be encouraged to play a more meaningful role that should include contributions to the organizations. With this said, it will be appropriate to encourage the Director General to establish a platform for dialogue with business on critical issues that will assist member states to efficiently attend to migration challenges. My country has taken a step to harmonize the various legislations on citizenship, immigration and refugee protection into one policy framework called the White Paper on Citizenship, Immigration and Refugee Protection as an attempt to strengthen the protection of those within and those seeking to reside within the borders of our country. In this regard, the White Paper has been published for public comments and we encourage the IOM 
to consider and, where necessary, provide their comments. As part of our comprehensive efforts to regularize migration, we launched the Border Management Authority in October 2023. Without any doubt, evidence has proven that regular migration can contribute to the development and prosperity of both sending and hosting nations. Lastly, Chairperson, my, my delegation believes that member states have the responsibility to ensure that national led dignified lives by ensuring access to basic needs such as health, education, clean, safe drinking water and sanitation as well as employment. The element of push factors that force people to take unsafe and dangerous pathways in search of better livelihoods should be a priority for the IOM. This can be realized, amongst others, by encouraging dialogue on issues of promotion, protection, and fulfillment of human rights to nationals so that we address challenges associated with irregular migration. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to yes. Excellency Honorable Dr. Vinidia Persau, the Minister of Human Services and Social Security of Guyana. Yes. Esteemed colleagues, Madam Chair, Director General, thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the floor and I congratulate you on your election to this new role. I also wish to extend my congratulation to Ms. Amy Pope on her election as the first female Director General. I commend the Council for this historic decision and I'm pleased to recognize the number of women seated at the head table. This 114th session occurs against a world in crisis, wars in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, disproportionately impacting civilians and compounding the migration challenge at both the global and regional levels. Closer to the Caribbean region, the situation within Haiti, which has left the people of Haiti with migration being the most viable option, which has been a challenge for many Caribbean countries. Similarly, the ongoing situation within Venezuela has also put pressure on many countries within our hemisphere, including Guyana, which shares a border with Venezuela. In this respect, I wish to personally and on behalf of the government of Guyana commend the IOM for its continued collaboration with Guyana and other international partners as we continue to provide humanitarian assistance, comfort and relief to the migrants. The government of Guyana places high priority on the work of the IOM, and I note that Guyana has historically been a country of origin, destination, and transit for migrants. Our commitment is to address holistically the issues associated with migration, and in that regard, Guyana participated in the ninth Summit of the Americas held in 2022 and endorsed the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection. It is our view that this document complements the 2018 UN Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, which Guyana and other UN member states adopted. Madam Chair, we note the increasing impact climate change and climate-related issues has and can have on migration issues. My own country, Guyana, has felt the impact of weather-related disasters, unprecedented flooding in several areas in 2021 and 2022 has caused severe damages estimated at more than US 465 million, 60% of our GDP. This has meant internal displacement for several hinterland communities Guyana has been described as particularly vulnerable to climate change because of high levels of exposure and sensitivity to climate risks. It is against this backdrop and others that Guyana has pioneered an overarching framework for planning and implementing climate resilience actions in several areas, including human mobility through its Low Carbon Development Strategy, LCDS 2030. Since its membership with IOM in 2011, Guyana and IOM have collaborated on the engagement within the Guyanese diaspora, strengthening of the security mechanisms for the enhancement of migration management in Guyana, 
migration and health promotion, and in the assisted voluntary return and reintegration programs. We look forward to building on this partnership and developing new areas for collaboration with the IOM, particularly as it relates to addressing the plight of women and children. Madam Chair, in closing, I wish us a successful 114th Council. I thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor <clears throat> to uh, Her Excellency Ms. Anna Maria Mochetti, the Minister of Labour and Home Affairs of Botswana. Chairperson, Honourable Ministers, Director General, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates. At the onset, I wish to express my delegation's heartfelt congratulations to you, Madam Chair, on your election as Chairperson of the Council Bureau and assure you of Botswana's support during your tenure. We also commend the previous chairperson, Ambassador Lanza Geberi of Sierra Leone, for his dedication to the Bureau's work. We further take this opportunity to once again congratulate Ms. Amy E. Pope as she attends her first council session as Director General of the IMO following assumption of the, first of the post on the 1st October 2023. We wish her a very successful tenure in driving forward the mandate of the organization. Chairperson Botswana commends the IONO, IMO for its focus on climate change and human mobility issues, particularly at a time when the frequency and intensity of climate-induced hazards are increasing. Deliberations on these concerns in the high-level segment of this council are timely and relevant, and we hope this will result in our collective commitment to urgently work towards bold coordinated actions to address the impact of climate change on human mobility. Climate change has created a new normal of unpredictable rainfall patterns in Botswana, exacerbating the unreliability of rain-fed agriculture. Drought is another persistent problem Botswana faces, mitigation of which leads to the erosion of resources available for socio-economic growth. However, we have entered into strategic partnerships with local and international stakeholders to mitigate the negative effects of climate change and implement appropriate adaptation strategies. In 2024, Botswana is scheduled to receive assistance from the INO, IMO in respect to the climate change and human mobility strategy. The strategy will support government efforts to address gaps in the national climate change policy and the National Disaster Risk Reduction Strategy. Chairperson, at the regional level, Botswana hopes to positively contribute to the discourse of migration governance through our chair of the Pan-African Forum on Migration, PAFOM, which we recently hosted in Khaburoni from 31st October to 2nd November, 2023. One notable outcome of the meeting was the agreement by member states that greater effort should be made towards improvement of the migration regulatory framework. This will facilitate free movement in its entirety, particularly the right of entry, right of residence, and right of establishment, as well as the need to align trade and migration strategies with the African continental free trade area and reduce barriers to doing business on the continent in order to attract investors. I wish to express my sincere gratitude for all the support Botswana has received and continues to receive from the IOM. In that regard, we note the following events that took place this year. In August 2023, with the support of the IOM Development Fund, the government of Botswana undertook the Migration Governance Indicators, MGI, assessment, and the report was launched. The MGI assessment assisted in finalizing the national migration policy and its accompanying action plan that commenced in 2016. The Trafficking in Persons Project was launched by the Minister of Justice on 17th October 2023. The project aimed to strengthen efforts to address trafficking in persons in Botswana in line with rele relevant national, regional and international frameworks. 
Before I conclude, Madam Chair, allow me to put forward two points which Botswana deems very important for consolidation of existing efforts to advance the migration discourse in the country. The first is our desire to have the IOM country office in Botswana upgraded from a satellite of the regional office in Pretoria, South Africa, to a fully-fledged IOM mission. The other is to see more Botswana citizens employed, especially in professional ranks. Botswana is on the list of 36 non-represented member states, countries that, according to the IOM, has no staff members working in professional and international roles. It is our sincere hope and expectation that these points will receive your very active consideration. I thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to Ms. Isabel Castro Fernandez, the State Secretary for Migration of Spain. Madam, you have the floor. Gracias, Presidenta, Directora General, Excelencias, queridos colegas y autoridades. Quiero destacar, en primer lugar, el compromiso del Gobierno de España en la tarea de afrontar el fenómeno global de las migraciones desde una perspectiva multilateral y con un enfoque tanto de derechos como de protección. Por ello, reafirmamos nuestro compromiso como país en el seno de la OIM para hacer frente a los desafíos y oportunidades que plantea la movilidad humana. El modelo migratorio de España se ha ido reformando en las últimas décadas, para ir dando cómodo a las mejores prácticas avaladas por la experiencia, tanto nacional como comparada. El resultado es un marco regulatorio que gira en torno a tres ejes fundamentales. El primero, la existencia de diversas vías de migración regular, ordenada y segura. El segundo, el principio de igualdad de derechos para los extranjeros con respecto a los españoles. Y el tercero, el diseño y fomento de políticas de integración social orientadas hacia los migrantes. Estos tres pilares encuentran reflejo en toda una serie de buenas prácticas reconocidas, entre otros actores relevantes, por la OIM. Entre ellas pueden citarse, en línea con las últimas reformas introducidas en los años 2021 y 2022, la creación de un régimen específico para favorecer la regularidad documental de los menores no acompañados y los jóvenes extutelados el refuerzo de las vías de migración regular de carácter laboral y la mejora del sistema de gestión por medio de herramientas tales como la digitalización. Otros ejemplos destacados de buenas prácticas son los programas españoles de migración circular para favorecer en estrecha colaboración con las empresas la protección del trabajador extranjero o la creación de una oficina específica y 100% telemática para tramitar las autorizaciones de residencia y trabajo de ciertos colectivos estratégicos, inversores, emprendedores, trabajadores altamente cualificados o sujetos a traslado intraempresarial, nómadas digitales, etcétera, en el plazo improrrogable de 20 días naturales. Apoyamos los esfuerzos que tanto la OIM como la ACNUR están realizando en el ámbito de la complementariedad para garantizar una respuesta a los flujos mixtos de movilidad. De esta forma, se precisa de una perspectiva de 360 grados que analice las causas de la movilidad, la especificidad de ciertos grupos vulnerables y las buenas prácticas de integración. Conscientes de la necesidad de una mayor cooperación y colaboración entre países y regiones y con motivo de la actual situación, hemos puesto en marcha un proyecto piloto de vías complementarias al resentamiento, un acuerdo que junto a Estados Unidos y Canadá prevé reasentar hasta 5.000 personas desde Centroamérica, en base a unas nuevas vías legales y seguras para personas con necesidades de protección internacional. Estas vías posibilitan el traslado y estancia legal de personas con el apoyo de un contrato de trabajo a un tercer país donde sus necesidades de protección internacional y el contrato laboral se vean satisfechas. Quiero resaltar el avance de nuestro país en la conquista de derechos que se ha hecho realidad a través de un desarrollo de una amplia legislación que les garantiza el impulso del Estado del bienestar que le hace efectivo. Entre estas medidas destaca el segundo Plan de Derechos Humanos 2023-2027, aprobado en el mes de junio de este año. Este plan consta de cuatro grandes ejes de actuación. El primer eje establece las obligaciones internacionales y cooperación de España. 
El segundo eje contiene medidas para avanzar en la protección y promoción de los derechos humanos. El tercero se refiere a la igualdad entre hombres y mujeres, con medidas que van desde la lucha contra la violencia de género hasta las brechas en el empleo, los cuidados y la conciliación. Y el cuarto tiene por objeto garantizar la igualdad de trato, la no discriminación y la protección de grupos específicos entre los que destaca la población migrante. De este modo, el objetivo 4 de este plan está dedicado exclusivamente a la protección de las personas migrantes a través de medidas para garantizar su inclusión social, como por ejemplo la financiación y el apoyo técnico para los proyectos de convivencia y cohesión social, el análisis de la xenofobia, el racismo o el discurso del odio, el desarrollo de acciones formativas y de sensibilización de todos los agentes involucrados. Además, desde el Gobierno de España se han aprobado diferentes medidas que impulsan los objetivos contemplados en este plan, tal y como el protocolo para la detección temprana de vulnerabilidades entre las personas llegadas a nuestro territorio, tanto por vía marítima como terrestre, el protocolo de prevención y respuesta a violencia contra las mujeres migrantes en colaboración con la ACNUR, la participación en diferentes mecanismos de control y seguimiento de estas medidas con el examen periódico realizado por el Comité de la Tortura de Naciones Unidas. En definitiva, para el Gobierno español, la solidaridad, el respeto a los derechos humanos y la acción multilateral son vías claras para afrontar los retos y las oportunidades del fenómeno migratorio. Gracias por su atención. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Switzerland, Mr. Vincenzo Maschiolo of the State Secretariat for Migration. So you have the floor. Merci. Madame la Présidente, Madame la Directrice Générale, Excellences, chers et chers collègues, nous nous réunissons aujourd'hui dans un contexte global marqué par de nombreux défis migratoires. La Suisse se comprend comme partenaire de nombreux pays d'origine et de transit dans le renforcement de leur cadre de gestion des migrations. Bien que les efforts des gouvernements restent centraux, les agences de l'ONU en particulier euh, l'OIM, doivent aussi jouer un rôle, un rôle clé. Seule une coopération internationale renforcée peut avoir un impact significatif sur la gestion de la migration et sur le sort des personnes migrantes. Par conséquent, il est prioritaire pour la Suisse que l'OIM soit solide et bien équipée pour répondre à ses objectifs. Nous considérons que la force principale de l'OIM et son personnel. Très engagé, il mérite toute notre gratitude pour son travail dans une multitude de contextes, souvent extrêmement difficiles. Merci à vous qui contribuez à soulager les plus vulnérables et qui appuyez les États dans leurs tâches. Les réformes de l'OIM dans le domaine de la gestion et du personnel ont déjà été importantes et elles resteront cruciales pour le développement de l'organisation. En tant que pays hôte, la Suisse est aussi particulièrement sensible à la qualité et au bien-être du personnel de l'OIM. Pour cette raison, et pour continuer à soutenir le processus de réforme, la Suisse a décidé d'octroyer une contribution volontaire d'un million de francs suisses dédiés aux questions de la gestion et du personnel. De telles contributions volontaires sont importantes dans l'immédiat. Elles s'inscrivent aussi dans la continuité de la réforme budgétaire dans l'idée de donner à l'organisation les moyens d'être solide et efficace. Nous sommes aussi confiants cependant que les réformes engagées par l'OIM réduiront sa dépendance à l'égard des contributions volontaires et lui permettront d'adopter une approche de plus en plus stratégique en lien avec son mandat. Nous aimerions également remercier l'OIM pour la publication du rapport de données du personnel de l'OIM. Les données publiées permettent aux États d'avoir une image claire et transparente du personnel qui compose l'OIM. Ce rapport sera un outil très utile à l'avenir pour mener l'organisation vers plus d'égalité des genres et une meilleure répartition géographique. Nous encouragerons donc l'OIM à continuer sur cette voie en mettant régulièrement à jour ces données et éventuellement même à les affiner. Pour conclure, 
J'aimerais vous souhaiter, Madame la Directrice Générale, un mandat fructueux, euh, saluer l'excellente qualité du dialogue entre l'OIM et la Suisse, tant au niveau institutionnel qu'opérationnel, et réitérer l'engagement de la Suisse à travailler ensemble et à vous soutenir. Merci. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to our Director General to answer to your questions and comments. Thank you very much. And I will um, go in response to, to the order in which um, governments spoke. So starting with the United States, um, just uh, an enormous thank you to the United States of America, which has played a key role in supporting this organization. Um, as our biggest donor, but increasingly as a donor who is providing more flexible funding, uh, which is absolutely critical to the work we do, and to recognizing the importance of providing funding to support um, both our internal management procedures, but also to build out in areas um, such as climate resilience in communities that are extremely vulnerable. I also want to commend the United States for leading some new work on regular pathways, uh, whether they are humanitarian, family reunification, or labor mobility pathways. And, and we at IOM see the work that you're doing on the Safe Mobility Initiative, um, in particular with uh, partners in Canada and Spain as uh, innovative, um, well aligned with our own strategic priorities, and we are very, very proud to work with you to achieve those goals, um, including with our partners at UNHCR, so thank you very much. Um, on Uganda, I would like to, first of all, commend the government of Uganda for their tremendous leadership and the minister herself, who's been a true champion um, to draw attention, but also build better pathways for communities that are impacted by climate change. Um, the government of Uganda has been absolutely critical in advancing the Kampala Declaration on Migration, Environment, and Climate Change, which is a groundbreaking agreement now um, with 33 signatures from member states across the African continent, acknowledging how climate will impact communities at risk. So tremendous, tremendous thank you for your key leadership on that. And we look forward to working with you at COP28 to get that number from 33 to 54, and then ultimately to the whole world. So we stand with you and appreciate your tremendous work. And note, by the way, that that work is happening um, uh, even with Uganda's um, hosting of, of uh, significant numbers of migrants and refugees from around the world. So your leadership is, is extremely commendable. I'd like to thank the government of Azerbaijan for its efforts really as a regional leader. Um, the, on, in a number of different levels. First of all, Azerbaijan is leading as a uh, uh, GCM champion country, and we celebrated that fact very much this last week. Um, it has been supporting the Global Compact on Migration Regional Review. It played a key role in the um, International Migration Review Forum just over a year ago, and the Global Climate on Migration talks. Additionally, Azerbaijan as a government is to be commended for establishing the Regional Training Center on Migration, which is creating migration best practices that are available um, across the region. And then, of course, uh, Azerbaijan is leading in its role as chairing the Almaty process for this year, encouraging governments to promote regular pathways to to recognize the impact of climate-induced mobility among the Almaty process countries. And we're grateful for all the work that you are doing there. I'd like to acknowledge and express appreciation to the Islamic Republic of Iran. We know that you as a, as a government, as a country, have provided tremendous hospitality to millions of Afghan refugees and migrants, that in doing so, you have generously provided access to schools, access to health care, access to livelihood. We recognize that the impact on your country has been significant and that um, it's important to encourage members of the international community to support your people in order to continue to play that role. So we want to recognize the work that you've done, recognize the impact that it has had on your government um, and on your communities more broadly. And now looking to South Africa. South Africa is playing a tremendous role in hosting migrants and refugees from around the world. The, most, um, the highest number of 
uh, migrants in the African continent is, are hosted by South Africa. I want to recognize your government in doing so and commend you for reviewing the frameworks used for managing international migration. Your white paper on citizenship, immigration, and refugee protection establishes a whole of government approach, a whole of society approach that is truly a model for others. And what we see is that it improves, it will improve migration governance in the country that brings together various pieces of legislation and demonstrates a very good practice that could be modeled by other. I recognize the establishment of your border management authority, which is meant to improve coordination and cooperation amongst the various governments that work on border issues. And we are able to provide technical support to your government to strengthen those efforts, recognizing how valuable they are to the management of migration more broadly. We look forward to continuing our cooperation with you in the Republic of South Africa, not just through technical support, um, but also through our um, best practices that we've learned by engaging with your government, uh, by ensuring that we are um, creating legal pathways for skilled migrants, enhancing your data management capacity, and building support across the SADC region to ensure better movement um, for people across the region, but also so that it is um, both enhances your economic development as well as that of migrants across the region. So thank you very much for your work to the government of South Africa. I'd next like to acknowledge um, the government of Guyana. Um, first of all, your commitment to the needs of migrants through your multi-agency coordinating committee. It exemplifies a whole of government approach. It's extremely collaborative. It's promoted by the Global Compact on Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration. And importantly, it allows for the contribution of the UN partners working in migration, including IOM. We've also noted that you have taken a leadership role in combating the trafficking of persons um, through your development of a new bill. Um, and that has led to a number of significant significant enhancements, including a counter-trafficking in persons unit in the Guyana Police Force and Ministry of Human Services and Social Security. And these efforts have now been recognized by Guyana's Tier 1 placement in the United States Annual TIP Report, um, but it is evident to us through your tremendous leadership efforts. I'd also like to commend your involvement in um, engaging Guyana's diaspora, of which my grandmother was one, uh, so I have a special place in my heart for you. Um, but you've established a diaspora affairs unit within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Co Cooperation. We know that will facilitate the establishment of a mechanism by which we can engage the Guyanese diaspora around the world and then provide assistance di to diaspora members who want to remigrate to Guyana. And finally, I'd like to recognize the, your leadership on the impact of climate change, particularly on vulnerable communities, and your efforts to improve the resilience of those communities in the face of um, the significant, significant impact. I'd now like to turn to Botswana. I'd like to note the real leadership that we've seen from Botswana, particularly on the issue of climate change, as well on the, as their use of data to build resilience to climate impact on human mobility. We look forward to working with the government of Botswana, both to further develop the strategy on climate, climate change and human mobility. We look to, close, to work with the government to close the gaps on the national climate change policy and national disaster risk reduction strategy, as well as the diaspora engagement policy framework. Um, and the list of work does suggest the importance of increasing IOM's presence in Botswana. We also take note of Botswana's request that we improve prove the representation of Botswana, an important member state to IOM, in our professional workforce. And I personally want to note that this is a priority for me, one in which we are developing a range of strategies, including setting up a pathways program for nationals of Botswana as a non-represented country in our organization to build greater representation 
um, within the IOM. We recognize that we are stronger when we have the voices and the input um, of all of our member states and ensuring that we have non-represented members um, become represented members is something that will be uh, an issue we continue to push. Uh, with regard to Spain, first I'd like to thank you um, to the government of Spain for hosting me just a, a little over a week ago. Um, as part of your leadership as the President of the European Union and commend really the whole of government approach that Spain is bringing to the issue of migration. It is evident across all of your ministries. It was evident in every way in which you're engaging, whether or not it's to support the integration of migrants into your communities, to create more regular pathways for migrants, or to work with the private sector to ensure that migrants can be part of the solution in your country and not perceived as a problem. Um, Spain is really taking a tremendous leadership role, and it was evident on, in every interaction that I've had, every interaction that we've had within, with your government partners. IOM stands ready to support you in every aspect of the work you're doing. I'd like to commend you in particular for your role in engaging with the United States and Canada to provide regular pathways for persons who are displaced in the Americas, recognizing that that's a particularly um, innovative and unusual approach to migration, but one that does appear to be working. And we stand ready to engage the private sector to provide capacity support or whatever else might be needed in order to enable you to successfully um, uh, make that pro program work. Um, and I'd also like to note the role that you continue to play at least for another month or so um, as the European Union addresses the issue of migration across the uh, member states and uh, recognize its importance to what we're trying to do within the, the International Organization for Migration to create more safe and regular pathways. And finally, um, Switzerland, uh, dear Switzerland, we are very grateful, first of all, for hosting us um, as privileged migrants within your country, but also to recognize the work that you do um, to host migrants and asylees from around the world. You, in particular, have an efficient asylum and return system. It has become a model for other countries. A special mention goes to an innovative allocation of refugees and asylum seekers to the cantons, which you have done in partnership with the University of Zurich, as well as establishing a pre-apprenticeship program. We also want to praise you for the work that you've done to address the special needs of Afghan women um, and to note your solidarity with other EU member states at the external borders of the European Union, the EU neighborhood, and the north of Africa. And we, in particular, are deeply grateful uh, for your voluntary contribution, which will support our uh, management and reform efforts, which I know is not always the most exciting stuff, but we know from you and we have seen firsthand how critical it is to the functioning of our organization and the proper management of your investment. And finally, I would like to note um, our appreciation for your secondment um, of staff to our organization who regularly contribute to the work that we do and allow us to be a more effective and impactful international organization. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, DG. And we will now continue with our list of speakers moving on to the regional groups. And we will start with the distinguished representative of um, Korea um, speaking on behalf of the Asian Pacific Group. You have the floor. Uh, Madam Chair, I have the pleasure of speaking on behalf of the Asia Pacific Group. We extend warm congratulations on your assumption of the role of chairperson of the IOM Council. Your experience and dedication are invaluable assets, and we are confident that they will guide us towards another productive and harmonious year ahead. We also convey our appreciation to the outgoing chair, Ambassador Ransana Zuberi of Sierra Leone. We thank the DG for her comprehensive presentation on IOM's activities and progress this year we have had so far, as well as the plans for the coming year. Asia Pacific, as one of the most disaster prone regions in the world, faced 98 out of the 308 climate-related disasters that occurred worldwide in 2022. 
In this regard, the Asia Pacific Group finds the DG's attention on climate change and its impact on human mobility is especially timely. Recent statistics have shown that climate change is becoming a major driver of displacement at an unprecedented rate. The number of internally <coughs> displaced people by disasters reached 8.7 uh, million in 2022, marking a 45% increase compared to the previous year. It is also projected that nearly uh, 200 million people per year might need humanitarian assistance by 2050 due to climate-related disasters and socioeconomic impacts of the climate change. We find the IOM's attention on the climate impact on human mobility and promotion of legal pathways timely and relevant, including their inclusion into the programs and budget for the coming year. We also encourage IOM to take a greater role in bringing together diverse stakeholders, such as government, international organizations, civil society, and the private sector in finding comprehensive and creative solutions for these issues. We also appreciate IOM's growing visibility as the UN's migration agency, particularly its role as the coordinator of the UN Network on Migration. We encourage IOM to continue stepping up its efforts in achieving safe, regular, and orderly migration and enhancing the integration of migration across the UN system. As the world is faced with a complex situation of mixed movements, including forced displacements, we further recommend the IOM continues to engage constructively with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, working jointly to find solutions for people in displacement. Madam Chair, uh, Director General, as a member state, we are pleased to find the IOM's advancement into the role of the United Nations leading migration agency with an annual budget of 3 billion and around 20,000 staff members. However, we would like to highlight the pressing need for IOM to further strengthen its core organizational capacities for the future development of IOM. As pointed out in the recent MOPAN assessment, there is room for IOM to further develop its organizational capacity to support its rapidly expanding programs. It is of utmost importance that IOM build stronger capacities in human resources, inclusion, legal, control, and monitoring functions. It should also set clear priorities and align its programs accordingly. In this respect, we look forward to engaging in constructive consultation with IOM over its new strategy plan for the next five years. Last but not least, we welcome the DG's commitment to enhancing the geographical and gender representation within the IOM's workforce at all levels, which would surely be an asset to the organization. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And we will now move on to the distinguished representative of Argentina speaking in behalf of GRULAG. Ambassador, you have the floor. Gracias, señora presidenta. Quisiera en primer lugar felicitarla a usted y a los otros miembros de la mesa por su elección para conducir las labores del Consejo. Al tratarse de la primera reunión formal en la que el Grupo de Países de América Latina y el Caribe interviene de manera conjunta desde la asunción de la señora Amy Pope como directora general, quisiera expresar la disposición de los países de la región en trabajar conjuntamente con ella en el cumplimiento de su mandato. A través suyo agradecemos a la Secretaría por la preparación de esta reunión. La historia de América Latina y el Caribe está íntimamente ligada a los procesos de migración internacional. En este marco, nuestros países han demostrado una dedicación constante a los esfuerzos por fomentar una migración segura, ordenada y regular. En los últimos años hemos sido testigos de numerosos cambios en materia migratoria, tanto a nivel global como regional, a consecuencia de múltiples causas. Estos cambios se reflejan en los nuevos enfoques para abordar la migración, la composición de los flujos migratorios, la no linealidad de las migraciones actuales y las nuevas políticas públicas adoptadas por los Estados de manera unilateral y en coordinación con otros países. Este nuevo panorama migratorio internacional presenta desafíos significativos para los países del GRULAC, que a menudo se ven obligados a responder a los cambios en los volúmenes migratorios con recursos limitados y herramientas que requieren actualizaciones. En este contexto enfrentamos el constante desafío de desarrollar políticas migratorias coherentes 
con los lineamientos internacionales surgidos de, por consenso del Pacto Mundial sobre Migración. Mientras respondemos a las necesidades de las personas migrantes, sus familias y las de las comunidades en los países de origen, tránsito y destino, con un enfoque centrado en el ser humano. Los 23 objetivos para una migración segura, ordenada y regular adoptados hace ya cinco años por el Pacto Mundial sobre Migración, entre otros, la minimización de los factores adversos y estructurales que obligan a las personas a abandonar sus países de origen, el abordaje y la reducción de las vulnerabilidades en la migración y temas como la regularización de los migrantes, la inclusión social y el acceso a derechos en las comunidades de acogida la lucha contra todas las formas de discriminación y la xenofobia, el abordaje del impacto creciente del cambio climático y la degradación ambiental en la movilidad humana, la generación e intercambio de datos, la prevención de delitos como la trata de personas y el tráfico ilícito de migrantes, la incorporación de una perspectiva de género y el retorno voluntario y la reintegración como parte indispensable en la aplicación de un enfoque integral de la gestión de la migración, todos estos factores continúan exigiendo una mirada conjunta y respuestas urgentes, siempre basadas en la responsabilidad compartida tanto a nivel individual como colectivo por parte de los países de América Latina y el Caribe. En este contexto, la OIM articulada con los espacios subregionales de gobernanza migratoria cobra una importancia central a la hora de transformar la narrativa sobre la migración, erradicar la xenofobia y brindar apoyo para generar respuestas eficaces a las dinámicas migratorias en permanente cambio y ofrecer asesoramiento sobre las políticas y las prácticas relativas a la migración. En tal sentido y en relación con los cambios en marcha en la estructura organizativa de la OIM aprobados el año pasado, queremos destacar que nuestros países siempre estarán abiertos a considerar medidas para mejorar la eficiencia de la organización, así como la calidad de su impacto en el terreno. Por ello, invitamos a la Administración del OIM a continuar asegurando un amplio margen de consultas con los Estados miembros. Consideramos de suma importancia que las reformas tomen en cuenta las realidades migratorias de, los, de las cuatro subregiones de las Américas, Norte, Centro, Caribe y Sur, tanto en sus similitudes como en sus diferencias en términos de la cantidad, la composición y la dirección de los flujos y stocks migratorios, las políticas migratorias y también en relación con los factores que ocasionan la migración. Esto debe reflejarse en cualquier cambio estructural para seguir dotando a la organización de la capacidad de respuesta y de orientación que necesitamos. Al mismo tiempo, una OIM capaz de responder a los desafíos actuales debe nutrirse de una pluralidad de miradas y de ser diversa en su conformación. En la actualidad, el GRULAC se encuentra gravemente subrepresentado frente a otras regiones en la composición del personal de la organización. Solo el 8% del personal internacional de la OIM proviene de nuestra región. El número es aún más preocupante si consideramos la cifra de funcionarios senior, P5 o superior, que apenas llega al 4%. Algunos países, en especial muchos caribeños, no están representados en absoluto en ningún nivel. Por ello, agradecemos a la directora general haber reconocido el problema y la urgimos a desarrollar y consultar las iniciativas pertinentes con el fin de remediarlo a la mayor brevedad posible. Para terminar, al tiempo que la migración se consolida como uno de los temas más importantes de la agenda internacional contemporánea, notamos con preocupación cómo se multiplican los discursos públicos que alientan una mirada negativa sobre la migración y los migrantes, basados en datos inexactos y distorsionados, amplificados por campañas de desinformación y por estereotipos que pueden llegar a constituir discursos de odio, racismo y xenofobia. Frente a ello, los países del GRULA queremos aprovechar esta ocasión para reafirmar una vez más nuestra mirada de los migrantes como sujetos de derechos, 
nuestra certeza de que la migración ordenada, segura y regular es un factor que impacta de manera positiva en las sociedades de acogida en los planos económico, social y cultural y nuestra convicción de que la OIM debe seguir sirviendo de catalizador para desarrollar todo el potencial de la migración internacional. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the Ambassador of Rwanda on behalf of the African Group. Excellency, you have the floor. Chairperson, Rwanda has the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the African Group. We align with the statement delivered this morning by the distinguished delegation of Zimbabwe in expressing African Group's warm congratulations to the new Chairperson of the Council, Her Excellency Dr. Katarina Stach, and the entire team of the Bureau, and wish her and the Bureau success in delivering on the mandate of the Council. We also express our appreciation to the outgoing Chairperson of the Council, His Excellency Dr. Ansana Berry, Ambassador of Sierra Leone, and his team for dedicated work and collaboration during his tenure. Chairperson, the African Group thank the Director General of the International Organization for Migration, Ms. Ami Pope, for presentation of her report, providing preliminary updates on efforts that IOM is taking to deliver on the promise of migration while supporting the world's most vulnerable. The group took note of the global consultations that have brought to the fore several programmatic priority areas, including saving lives and protecting people on the move, driving solutions to displacement, with a particular focus on climate migration responses and facilitating regular migration pathways. The African group commends IOM initiative of saving lives and protecting people on the move as the organization has been at the front line of responses to crisis across the world, providing life-saving humanitarian assistance, protection and movement assistances to the people on the move, as well as responding to new challenges, posing devastating impacts on local populations. The year 2023 has, been, has seen millions forced out of their homes by sudden disasters and IOM's strong operational presence indicated its capacity, its capacity to quickly and directly respond to rapid onset disasters as well as support wider humanitarian responses. On driving solutions to displacement, the Africa Group appreciates IOM's understanding on migration as not only a route out of crisis situations but also a means to building resilience and promote development in communities affected by climate change, undeveloped conflict and instability. Underscoring the reason why IAM is working closely with member states and argues for concrete engagement with civil society organizations and communities to building solutions that improve resilience and enable communities to adapt to a rapidly changing and unstable world. The Africa Group further notes IOM positive, positive involvement in the pilot initiative under the Sec Secretary General's Action Agenda on internal displacement to develop state-led and costed cost durable solution uh, strategies and funding frameworks in 15 countries applauding the organization's support to the United Nations country team leadership, including with secondments, to coordinate durable solutions efforts at national and regional levels. Also, we encourage the current discussions on uh, institutional partnership agreements and frameworks with the Food Agriculture Organization at the United Nations of the United Nations, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the United Nations Development Program, UN Habitat, the World Food Program, and others, focusing on intensifying collaboration around the action agenda. Chairperson, the African Group welcomes IOM's scaling up engagement with academia to expand actionable analysis, 
together with Georgetown University's Institute for the Study of International Migration, having launched the first periodic global report on the state of solutions to internal displac uh, displacement. The report offers people-centered and operationally relevant uh, evidence and analysis that enables displaced people to move toward durable solutions. Further advocating for a shift from focusing on when displacement ends to when solutions start and illuminate some of the key factors influencing the solutions process, such as the length of displacement, housing and climate change impact. We appreciate such a unique combination of quantitative and qualitative data, which includes input from focus group discussions with over 50, 550 displaced persons, returnees and host community representatives in 10 countries and from consultations with member states. On regional climate action, climate change action, the African group applauds the IOM and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change on the support to the Kampala Ministerial Declaration on Migration, Environment and Climate Change, which was signed by ministers from governments across Africa in September at the Africa Climate Summit in 2023. Such a government-led comprehensive and action-oriented framework that practically and effectively addresses climate-induced mobility and the needs, gaps, and opportunities of human mobility has to be collectively supported. We note that during this summit, IOM hosted a side event in a partnership with the United States Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration to invite government partners and practitioners to support the implementation of programs that address the challenges of climate-induced mobility. The African group further appreciates IOM's partnership with the Office of the African Union Chairpersons, Youth Envoy, and the African Union Commission's Women, Gender and Youth Directorate in hosting the, con the Continental Migration and Youth Consultation in, Go in August 2023. The three days of discussions resulted in two reflections and critical analysis of Africa's most pressing migration issues by youth stakeholders and advocates resulted in the development of the joint AU, IOM, Youth Declaration and Call to Action on Migration and Youth on the African Continent. Chairperson of the African Group commends IOM new phase of the cooperation on migration and partnerships to achieve sustainable solutions, as confirmed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Netherlands for the period 2024-2027. Considering that this new phase has played a significant role in providing protection services to over 83,000 migrants across 14 partner countries, including safe and dignified return and sustainable reintegration, and that over 2,800 state and non-state actors have benefited from continuous capacity building capacity development in migration management, protection, and specialized protection assistance. The African group understands there is need for continuous collective collaboration in the implementation of these initiatives in addressing migration, including emerging complex challenges, and reiterates its firm support to the management of IOM from country, regional, and international levels. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the Ambassador of Egypt, speaking on behalf of the Arab Group. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. It is good to see you chairing us today, and a warm congratulations on your election as Chairperson of the Council, and through you, our congratulations to the distinguished members of the Bureau. Madam Director General, Madam Deputy Director General, Distinguished Delegates, Egypt is honored to deliver this statement on behalf of the Arab Group. The Arab Group seizes this opportunity to reiterate its appreciation and support to Madam Amy Pope, the first woman DG in the history of IOM, as she embarks on this critical role as new Director General 
in the midst of mounting global humanitarian challenges, forever changing the outlook of humanitarian work as we know it and pushing us forward towards accelerating our joint action and finding innovative solutions in the face of new and protracted crises. Madam Director General, you have the full support and encouragement of the Arab Group. The Arab Group welcomes the report of the Director General, which reflects a new beginning for the IOM, both on the institutional and operational levels, and welcomes the focus of the new leadership on emergency preparedness and response, climate mobility solutions, and enhanced regular pathways for migration and labor mobility. The Arab Group appreciates the role IOM is playing in response to the complex humanitarian crisis in the region as part of UN-wide response. We note with appreciation IOM's recently launched appeal for the humanitarian response in the occupied Palestinian territory and neighboring countries, its mobilization of humanitarian supplies to the affected population in Gaza, and its support in evacuating third country nationals and injured civilians through the Rafah border crossing. We also commend Madame Pope for joining the statement by the principles of the Inter-Agency Standing Committee, rejecting the establishment of any safe zone in Gaza that would be set up without the agreement of all the parties, and calling for a humanitarian ceasefire to ease the suffering and to help facilitate humanitarian operations. We seize this critical humanitarian platform to remind the international community of its humanitarian, legal and moral commitments to put an end to the Israeli military aggression on Gaza with its unprecedented and devastating humanitarian consequences and to stand firmly against any attempts by Israel as the occupying power to forcibly transfer the, the Palestinian people from their homes, whether within or outside the Gaza Strip. We also call on the UN system and the international community to strengthen its humanitarian emergency response to Gaza, to join the growing call for an immediate and comprehensive ceasefire, and to address the, to address the root causes of the ongoing crisis, which is the 75 year of Israeli occupation. The Arab group also welcomes the efforts of IOM in supporting the humanitarian response to the ongoing crisis in Sudan. The group calls on the international community to commit to the pledges it has made to the humanitarian response plan in Sudan, which remains largely underfunded, despite the escalating humanitarian situation and its devastating impact on the Sudanese people and its neighboring countries. The Arab group representing countries of origin, transit, and destination are looking forward to supporting the Director General in her efforts for ensuring effective migration governance and enhancing safe and legal migratory pathways that would contribute to the sustainable development of migrants and their host communities. The Arab group emphasizes the need to addressing growing challenges related to migration and displacement in a collective and holistic manner that tackles the adverse drivers of migration and takes the rights and well-being of migrants as well as their hosting communities into account. The Arab Group reaffirms the importance of implementing the Global Compact on Migration in accordance with national priorities and acknowledges the shared responsibilities of states to respect each other's needs and concerns over migration, as well as the need for enhanced international cooperation to facilitate safe, orderly and regular migration through the implementation of well-governed migration policies. We emphasize the important role of IOM as coordinator of the UN Network on Migration and look forward to more engagement with the Director General in this regard. The Arab Group underscores the critical role of IOM in supporting states to safeguard the dignity and rights of migrants and develop a positive discourse on migrants' contributions, which helps combat intolerance racism and xenophobia. It further stresses the important role by IOM in facilitating cooperation between countries of origin and destination to mitigate against challenges associated with the brain drain and consolidate the positive contribution of migration towards sustainable development. 
the Arab group welcomes the new IOM's leadership priority focus on human mobility in the context of climate change and accelerating global action towards climate mobility response. We recognize the increasing impact of climate change and environmental degradation on new and existing movements and emphasize the need for context-driven tailored solutions to respond to the needs of affected populations, especially people living in vulnerable situations which should not be left behind. The Arab group continues to support IOM's reform efforts intended to make the organization fit for purpose, taking into consideration its increased responsibilities and growing challenges. We highlight the importance of continued commitment to ensuring efficiency, transparency and accountability of the organization and reflecting the priorities and needs of countries in which it operates in a balanced manner. We also welcome the budget reform aimed at finding a solution to the limitations of the dependency on the core funded structure and engaging with non-conventional donors, particularly the private sector, to enhance flexible funding that can support project implementation and overcome challenges pertaining to the increasing gap between humanitarian needs and available funding. The Arab group also welcomes the DG's commitment to ensuring equitable geographic representation with the steadily increasing cooperation between members of the Arab region and IOM, the group recalls its request to add Arabic as an official language of the organization in line with UN-wide standards and practices with the aim of an enhanced regional and geographical re representation and a continued engagement with the region's priorities. In closing, the Arab group reiterates its commitment to extending its support to our dear DG and to IOM to continue its crucial role as the leading organization in the field of migration in the UN system and pledges to continue to play a constructive role in promoting multilateral efforts towards effective and sustainable migration policies. Shukran, said the Raisa. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the European Union. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, Chair, first, I would like very much to congratulate you warmly in your new role as uh, Chair of the Bureau. So all the best to you and the Bureau. I'm speaking on behalf of the European Union and its member states. The candidate countries, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, Albania, Ukraine, the Republic of Moldova, and the potential candidate country, Georgia, align themselves with the statement. Director General, we thank you for your report. The EU and its member states value our partnership with IOM. In recent years, IOM has grown significantly, driven by the emergence of new humanitarian crises and the worsening conditions in many protracted crises. We express in particular our grave concern about Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, the continued escalation of the conflict in Sudan, and the deepening humanitarian crisis in Gaza, and we recall relevant European Council conclusions on this. We deplore all loss of civilian lives, and we reiterate once again the obligation of all parties to respect and ensure respect for international humanitarian law. In the face of these challenges, we commend IOM for maintaining its agility and flexibility, allowing it to adapt and respond swiftly also thanks to its strong field presence. This substantial growth of IOM would not have been achievable without the EU and its member states, which collectively constitute the largest donor. Director General, we also appreciate IOM's growing leadership as the UN Migration Agency and coordinator of the United Nations Network on Migration. We trust that the new strategic plan for 20. For, uh, 28 and the internal governance framework 2.0 will provide opportunities to consolidate the organization and to further build on the ongoing reform processes also guided by the recent and very positive MOPAN assessment. As the strategic plan takes shape, we see the essential emerging priorities that you intend to establish for the organization. We share your view that it is important to increase efforts to save lives and protect people on the move, working jointly with UNHCR on mixed migration flows through a whole of route 
approach, promote legal pathways for migration to prevent irregular migration and counter smuggling and human trafficking, and to understand climate change as one of the drivers of migration. We welcome your planned focus on data and its use for action, and urge you to work on data sharing and interoperability with other UN agencies. We value your aim to enhance cooperation with the private sector, academia, affected communities, and other partners to find solutions. We also invite you to put a strong emphasis on oversight, accountability, and transparency. We encourage IOM to take forward the objective of promoting safe and legal pathways globally in line with national competences, including labor mobility schemes as part of a comprehensive human rights-based approach to migration, which also return, includes return and reintegration. We need to build triple win solutions for countries of destination and origin and migrants themselves. With an aging population, labor shortages in some sectors, and digital and green transitions, the European Union will need to mobilize 7 million more people into employment by 2030. While using the untapped potential of our domestic workforce, we would also rely on the right talents from abroad for sectors with labor shortages across all qualification levels. We would appreciate IOM to build on and complement the EU initiatives in this field, in particular the talent partnerships and the newly proposed EU talent pool. These initiatives, together with bilateral initiatives of EU member states, will provide a real alternative to smuggling and human trafficking networks, thus curbing irregular migration and saving lives. We commend and share IOM's commitment to finding and implementing solutions to climate change-induced mobility. Such a complex issue requires a holistic approach and sustainable responses in terms of resilience building and early warning that enables people to stay and that ensures protection and dignity for those who move. This requires action on all levels, national, regional and global. We welcome the focus on climate for this year's high-level segment, and we thank you for the good collaboration during the EU Chair of the Platform on Disaster Displacement. The EU and its member states believe that an additional effort must be made to guarantee a gender-responsive approach to the internal organization of IOM and the formulation and implementation of projects. We look forward to an updated version of the 2015 Gender Equality Policy and we appreciate the recent launch of the Gender and Migration Research Policy Action Lab. To conclude, we're looking forward to continuing our valuable and strategic partnership with the IOM. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the DG for her comments. Thank you very much. And I want to start by saying a thank you to each of the regional groups who have provided me with the opportunity, both formally and informally, um, to consult with you, to get your feedback on various issues, including our strategic planning, our prioritization, our budgeting, our staffing, um, and our um, changing or reconsideration of, of certain policies. So across the board, I have found the regional groups to be an important source of support and information information, and please know that it is um, a priority of mine to make sure that we continue these um, ongoing uh, consultations and to continue to build the relationship. Uh, with respect to Asia Pacific, I want to particularly call out the fact that um, with the impact of climate and with the uh, tremendous number of examples we have on mobility across Asia Pacific, that there are lessons that we can take and learn and apply more broadly. Uh, 
um, and also ultimately to ensure that we are starting to build out more sustainable pathways for people while also protecting the rights and dignity of people on the move and focusing in, uh, as well on um, ensuring that when migrants are working, when they're sending resources back home, that that money is done, that money is sent effectively with a minimum number of fees uh, so that we can make sure that migrant remittances can um, go back and support that the, the communities that they are from. I also want to note to the Asia Pacific group, um, their, uh, their request for uh, better representation um, within our organization is one that I take very much to heart. It's for that reason um, that we have made clear that the language policy, which had an unfortunate, unintended consequence of um, leading to fewer Asian uh, Pacific region nationals being qualified for jobs was changed so that we no longer have that barrier to inclusion in our workforce and it is something that we will continue to prioritize across the board. Uh, the same, uh, the, uh, likewise with respect to the GRULAC, um, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, we too have taken seriously and have heard um, the importance of making sure that we are a more representative organization. Having 4% of our senior leadership staff reflective of the GRULAC is um, not adequate in this day and age. We are standing up a, um, a, a team to better engage, recruit, um, uh, persons from Latin America and the Caribbean so that we can have better representation, recognizing that that's how we do a better job as an organization. I also want to thank the GRULAC for recognizing the importance of a collective and regional approach to what has been really unprecedented movements across the region, whether it's in the Caribbean, where we're seeing a tremendous number of people who are impacted by climate change, um, or in the Americas, and recognizing that the number and nationality of persons moving across the Americas at this moment in time is quite complex. I recognize that it's provided um, significant challenges for some of the communities who have been impacted, um, but despite those challenges, I want to recognize the countries of the GRULAC for maintaining a hospitable approach um, to advocating for a more inclusive and, and rights-based approach to migration and for ensuring that we are not um, collectively taking a more punitive um, uh, narrative approach to the issue of migration. I'd also like to note that we have um, recently established a regional hub in Barbados to address the particular issues that we are seeing emerging within the Caribbean. Uh, within the African group, I want to say thank you for your tremendous leadership, particularly on addressing the issues of displacement due to conflict, also due to climate change. Um, with the adoption of the historic Kampala Declaration on uh, migration um, and environment and climate change, we are seeing the seeds of something that will be significant globally, not just in the region itself. And your model in really driving a people-centered approach to the impact of climate change, recognizing that the impact of climate on human mobility is at the center of, of what will have to be a comprehensive approach, is something that will have wide impact, um, not just for the communities that are, that are of interest in your continent, but as I've said, everywhere in the world. I'd also like to recognize your um, particular um, uh, inclusion of young people, um, whether it's in the upcoming COP, whether it's in response to building out solutions to conflict or climate-related displacement, um, as well as the work you've done to advocate for women and inclusion of diaspora communities, work that we want to um, harness to use in other parts of the world. I'd like to thank the Arab group in particular for your support and recognize that within the Arab group countries, we are seeing a high number of persons who are displaced, of course, as a result of protracted humanitarian crises, but increasingly because of climate impact. If, particularly if those con uh, communities are already facing vulnerabilities as a result of existing or post-conflict. So having a human-centered approach is absolutely key and 
the leadership of the Arab group states, particularly in COP27 and in the upcoming COP28, is work that is to be commended and work that we are very, very pleased to be um, uh, doing with you um, and your members. Um, and finally, to the European Union, I'd first of all just like to say thank you, because um, the European Union, combined with um, the European Union member states, is IOM's biggest donor. You are supporting work that is critical across the board, across the humanitarian peace and development nexus, as well as with regard to migration management. Um, your humanitarian work that you support around the world is critical, whether it is in response to emerging crises or communities that are vulnerable for a host of other reasons. And our work, for example, in Ukraine, where IOM has the largest footprint of any UN agency, is very much um, with thanks to the European Union and its member states, um, and it's work that we are very proud to be doing in partnership with you. Uh, we take very, very seriously our obligation to use the resources that you're investing in our organization wisely, transparently, and with appropriate controls. And we note that um, we have you are um, experimenting with some uh, really innovative solutions to migration, including through the talent partnerships and the talent pools. And that is work that we within IOM are very, very pleased to support, to advocate, and to make work um, for all people. So please do count on us. And finally, I will note that our gender policy is only moments away from release. So we very much appreciate um, the support of the EU on um, gender inclusion, gender equity, gender parity within our organization. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, DG. And we now move on with our speakers list and we now come to member states. And may I remind everybody what I said in the beginning, the speaking time is three minutes for member states. And I have been told that now there is a clock. I can't see it, but you are supposed to see it. And please watch the clock while speaking, because that would mean that we can actually accommodate all the speakers we have envisaged for today, which means that we um, can finish in time on Wednesday. <laughs> With this having said, and bearing this in mind, I have the honor to give the floor to the distinguished representative of India. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor, and congratulations to you on your election as the Chair of the Council. And I will try to abide by your time restrictions. I see a repeat of Human Rights Council here. Uh, Madam Chair, Director General, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, a very good evening to you all. On behalf of Indian delegation, I would like to thank the Director General for her report presented earlier today. We commend the DG and her team for the initiatives being taken to energize the IOM and to make it fit for purpose. Earlier in October this year, immediately after assuming her office, DG had held regional consultations with member states to ascertain their views and to spell out her vision for the IOM. India is looking forward to working together with DG and her team in taking requisite steps to implement the vision and priorities of member states. We assure her and her team of our continued support. India commends and appreciates the role and contribution of the IOM as the primary global organization in facilitating safe, orderly, and regular migration. India not only aligns itself with these objectives, but also supports various programs, projects, aimed at fulfilling them. In the spirit of supporting the IOM in realizing its core objectives, India has proposed two specific initiatives for the consideration of the IOM and its member states, and they are way forward on social security portability of migrants and mapping up global skill gaps. India thanks the IOM for accepting these proposals and their inclusion in its programs, governance, and organizational priorities. We hope to make a quick progress as we believe that our initiatives will serve the interests of both Global South and Global North and will contribute in promoting orderly, safe, and legal migration, reducing thereby illegal migration. 
India, as we have often reiterated, supports safe, orderly, and regular migration. And to this end, it has put in place institutional mechanisms. These would be covered in more detail in the high-level segment by our Vice Minister. We are very confident that our experience and successes will inspire other countries to take similar steps in order to promote globally orderly migration, orderly and regular migration of people. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And uh, I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Philippines. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. We would like to extend our warmest congratulations to you on your election. We know we are in your good hands, and please be assured of our full support. I also wish to thank Sierra Leone Ambassador Lansana Giberi for his able leadership this past year. We are, of course, grateful to the Director General for her report. Madam Chair, complex crisis situations around the world continue to trigger the movement of people. The Philippines felt it most deeply in the increasing number of Filipino migrants, over 10 million all over the world, many finding themselves in harm's way. A crisis around the world usually means Filipino migrants are affected and our government will always be ready to be there to assist them and reunite them with their families back home. These crisis situations place heavy demands on humanitarian organizations, including the IOM, each playing a crucial role in preserving human life and dignity. The Philippines has always recited its trust in IOM and its leadership as they work for the rights and welfare of migrants. Our trust in IOM's leadership also informs our commitment to the IOM Migration Emergency Funding Mechanism, the IOM Development Fund, and the Migration Multi-Partner Trust Fund. And we thank all of you who have contributed to these funds as we urge others, traditional and non-traditional donors, to also extend support. We stand firmly behind the Director General and her priorities, including institutional reforms, advocating for regular and legal pathways, and continuing to explore the interlinkages between climate change and human mobility. On the latter, at COP28 in Dubai later on this week, President Ferdinand Marcus Jr. will chair a side event entitled Forging a Consensus on the Nexus Between Climate Change and Migration, and we are very pleased that the Director General has agreed to be part of this event. Thank you, ma'am. In addition to these priorities, an issue that demands attention is that of misleading narratives on migration, recognized by the GCM as a growing challenge. How migrants are perceived, accepted, or included by their communities, how they are used or misused in the political arena, the extent they are allowed to speak and participate in society can improve or detract from their welfare, well-being, and safety. The Philippines and Canada, under the French chairmanship of the GFMD, will be leading the discussions on the roundtable on narratives and culture during the GFMD summit in January. We also believe that the IOM can be one of the strong advocates in ensuring that this discussion on migrant narratives and advocating for positive changes on the ground continue in the multilateral space. As we are in the midst of our international campaign to end violence against women and girls, we wish to spotlight the need to protect our women migrants, many of whom are victims of human trafficking, subject to physical, sexual, and emotional abuse, or even simply lacking adequate social and mental health support. For this reason, the Philippines will continue to be part of and support gender mainstreaming, empowerment, and inclusion, both internally in the IOM and as part of its operations and initiatives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Morocco. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Qu'il me soit tout d'abord permis de vous féliciter pour votre accession à la présidence du Conseil et de vous assurer de notre plein soutien. Nous tenons également à exprimer notre gratitude à l'ambassadeur Lansana Gbiri pour l'excellent travail fourni et son engagement indéfectible devant, de, durant son mandat. Nos appréciations et félicitations vont également à Madame Pop et nous encourageons aussi pour son action pour atteindre l'objectif commun 
de promouvoir une vision commune d'un phénomène aussi naturel que, que structurant, et ce, dans un cadre idoin, celui de Pacte mondial de Marrakech. Aussi à l'onde des, cho des chocs, aussi exogènes qu'imprévisibles, la réponse au flux migratoire ne doit, autant qu'il ne peut, se soustraire aux réalités et aux faits. Et en ce sens, elle doit être humaine, informée, proactive et fondée sur l'aide au développement, se reposant également sur la solidarité, la coopération et le partenariat. Si les défis sont aujourd'hui communs et les constats sont similaires s'agissant des dynamiques migratoires, la réponse aussi doit être différenciée. Au demeurant, le pacte de Marrakech n'existe que par sa mise en œuvre et sa mise en œuvre complète n'est possible qu'à travers une implantation régionale. Dans ce cadre, ma délégation voudrait saluer le travail central du réseau sur l'immigration et assurer de l'engagement à faire des tables rondes et consultations régionales prévues cette année un réel succès pour promouvoir l'action visant à multiplier les voies de passage légal, notamment la migration de travail, tenant compte bien évidemment des besoins de chacun et tout en mettant en avant le phénomène nouveau des migrants climatiques auxquels davantage d'intérêt doit être accordé dans l'action future de l'OIM. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est parce que le Maroc est un pays de transit et de destination, l'hôte du pacte de Marrakech, ainsi qu'un pays champion des réseaux sur l'immigration, qu'il existe une cohérence totale entre son discours sur la migration et ses actions en la matière. Ainsi, le Maroc ne s'est-il pas contenté de défendre le respect des droits des migrants et de leur intégration, mais s'est engagé depuis 2013 dans la mise en œuvre d'une stratégie nationale d'immigration et d'asile pionnière dans la région, traitant autant des discours du sauvetage en mer, de la régulation que de l'intégration. Sur le plan du narratif et dans l'impératif d'informer toute décision dans le cadre des migrations, le Maroc, soutenu par l'ensemble des continents africains, a mis en place un observatoire africain des migrations. S'agissant du sauvetage en mer et en rapport avec le projet Mason Migrant, le Maroc est parmi les rares pays à disposer d'un référentiel de procédures standard pour un système d'orientation et de prise en charge des migrants. Ce projet important couvre l'accueil l'orientation, la prise en charge, l'accompagnement et le suivi des migrants vulnérables et des victimes des réseaux de trafic et de traite. Les autorités marocaines ont ainsi pu secourir plus de 60 000 migrants, rien contre 2018 et 2020. De surcroît, et concernant sa politique d'asile et des migrations, le Maroc a mené deux campagnes en ce sens au profit de 50 000 personnes, 95 en provenance de notre continent africain et 5% émanant du monde arabe. Aussi, l'ensemble des migrants présents sur le territoire marocain ont accès aux services de base et notamment l'éducation, les soins de santé et l'accès au marché de travail. Avant de conclure, je me permets de rappeler que l'immigration constitue un facteur d'innovation, de prospérité et de développement durable. L'immigration se déroulant dans des conditions humaines et de façon ordonnée profite à la fois aux migrants et aux sociétés. Le Maroc continuera à contribuer aux efforts de l'OIM, notamment dans le cadre des tables rondes régionales à venir et dans la réponse de l'organisation aux impacts croissants des changements climatiques. Je vous remercie, Madame la Présidente. Thank you very much, and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Côte d'Ivoire, Ambassador. You have the floor. Côte d'Ivoire, you have the floor. Merci. Madame la Présidente, la Côte d'Ivoire souscrit à la déclaration faite par le Rwanda au nom du groupe africain et voudrait vous adresser ses félicitations pour votre élection à la tête du Conseil en vous souhaitant plein succès dans l'accomplissement de votre mandat. Ma délégation voudrait saisir cette occasion pour réitérer ses félicitations à Madame Pope et l'assurer du soutien ainsi que la pleine coopération de la Côte d'Ivoire pour la réussite de sa, sa mission. Aussi, mon pays salue son prédécesseur, M. Antonio Vittorino, et l'ensemble du personnel de l'OIM pour toutes les actions menées en vue d'apporter assistance 
à tous les migrants à travers le monde. Madame la Présidente, la Côte d'Ivoire remercie la directrice générale pour la présentation de son rapport annuel qui met en évidence la problématique de la mobilité humaine ainsi que les impératifs migratoires actuels. En effet, les flux migratoires ont atteint un nouveau record du fait de, de crises multiformes qui traversent le monde, notamment les conflits armés, l'instabilité politique, la pauvreté, la crise économique mondiale, l'insécurité alimentaire et la sécheresse exacerbée par l'urgence climatique. Cette situation qui conduit des milliers de personnes dans l'inconnu entraîne une catastrophe humanitaire à l'échelle mondiale et plus particulièrement en Afrique. C'est à juste titre que mon pays salue la tenue de ce débat de haut niveau sur la mobilité humaine et le changement climatique qui nous permettra de conjuguer nos efforts pour mieux planifier, anticiper et faciliter notre réponse aux problèmes migratoires. À cet égard, la Côte d'Ivoire se félicite de l'appel mondial qui sera lancé au cours de cette session et qui vise à rechercher des solutions durables en mettant à profit le potentiel de la migration dans le monde. La Côte d'Ivoire soutient la vision stratégique de Mme Pope qui consiste à trouver des solutions pratiques et efficaces pour tous et surtout la perception positive de la migration comme une opportunité plutôt qu'un problème. Madame la Présidente, mon pays note avec satisfaction les progrès accomplis dans le cadre de la gouvernance interne et de la structure organisationnelle de l'OEM grâce au dialogue constructif permanent avec les États sur les besoins et les priorités en matière de financement et de ressources humaines. C'est le lieu de remercier l'OEM pour son soutien constant à la Côte d'Ivoire, notamment à travers le Fonds de développement qui permettra le financement du projet sur le développement des capacités du gouvernement de la Côte d'Ivoire en matière de gestion et de mobilisation de la diaspora. En outre, la Côte d'Ivoire se réjouit de la collaboration étroite entre l'OIM et le, le HCR, deux organisations onusiennes qui contribuent significativement à la mise en œuvre du Pacte mondial pour les réfugiés et cellules relatives aux migrations sûres, ordonnées et régulières. Pour conclure, Madame la Présidente, ma délégation appelle l'ensemble des parties prenantes au renforcement de la coopération et de la solidarité internationale. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sweden. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chair, Director General, Excellencies and Distinguished Delegates, Sweden aligns itself with the EU statement. As we will soon celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I would like to begin by acknowledging the great contribution of IOM colleagues around the world that work around the clock in sometimes life-threatening situations to uphold migrants' rights and support fellow human beings in need. We thank you. 2023 marks another year of continuous growth for IOM, which reflects the increasing importance of the organization's mandate and work. In this context, Sweden would like to underline the necessity to continue to develop IOM's ability to respond to emergencies while strengthening its core structures. To this end, we welcome and encourage the further development of human resource structures, as well as the functions for oversight and internal control, including work preventing sexual exploitation, abuse and harassment. We would like to encourage a continued strong focus on IOM's core mandate to provide service and advice to governments and migrants. Sweden commands IOM's crucial world worldwide under the strong leadership of Director General Amy Pope. We face a number of unprecedented, unprecedented and parallel challenges in the field of global migration, none of which can be solved without international cooperation. We look to the IOM to support us in finding ways forward with sustainable solutions to address the risks that so many people take in order to migrate. Supporting its members in addressing root causes of irregular migration and forced displacement, including poverty and climate change, must remain central. 
you can count on Sweden's steadfast support and partnership in all these areas moving ahead. The way forward for international cooperation in the area of migration must entail a comprehensive approach. Rights and obligations must be respected by, at all stages and by all parties. This includes the international obligation to protect those in need of international protection. It also includes a functioning system for return, readmission and reintegration that ensures that individuals can be properly returned without undue delay. This is essential for maintaining trust and credibility to the system. Additional efforts need to be made in the area of irregular migration, including combating human trafficking and smuggling, while ensuring adequate response mechanisms for victims. I thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Australia. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Australia aligns itself with the statement of the Asia-Pacific Group. And as instructed, I will dispense with the courtesies and jump straight into focus on one area in which Australia and IOM share a deep strategic alignment. We are excited to see IOM stepping up to support member states make their skills-based labour migration programs more inclusive of people with international protection needs. Working closely with UNHCR, the World Bank and others, we encourage IOM to dream big, to look at major migratory routes, determine what needs to be done to make those routes more accessible for people with international protection needs, and work with the states along those routes to design a project to make it a reality. IOM should support destination states to review their skills-based migration programs to ensure they are accessible for displaced talent. IOM should similarly encourage countries of origin to create permissive environments for displaced talent to emigrate through labour pathways. This might include the provision of travel documents, the grant of exit permits and the provision of the right of return. This might also include ensuring education and vocational training opportunities are available to equip people to join the global labour market. IOM should also support the individual who is displaced from their home but with skills and talents to offer to migrate through the promotion of skills-based pathways, safeguards for fair and ethical recruitment and protections against migrant worker exploitation. Growing such pathways to scale has the potential to be truly transformative as a solution for people in situations of displacement, additional to vulnerability-based pathways. It would be a win for destination states who gain the talent they need to meet their labour market needs. It would be a win for countries of origin who assist individuals to find a durable solution, alleviating the burden of hosting and generating remittances to support those left behind. It would be a win for the individuals who can take advantage of a lawful pathway to get on with their lives. We have focused our intervention on this one issue, not to diminish the wealth of important work IMO does in support of member states and migrants, but rather to highlight one area in which we think IOM should be looking to do more. If we get this right, displaced individuals will not have to choose between their vulnerability and their talent, but rather they will be given greater agency to create their own futures. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Turkey. You have the floor. Madam Chairperson, uh, Madam Director General Excellencies, at the outset we congratulate you, Madam Chairperson, on your election and convey our gratitude to your distinguished predecessor for his valuable guidance during the year. We are confident that we will achieve a substantial progress this year as well. We also would like to congratulate you, Madam Pop, on your election as the Director General of IAM. It's particularly an important milestone for IAM to have a woman at the steering wheel. We once again wish you success in this important and equally challenging position. Excellencies, we thank the Director General for her comprehensive report and reiterate our support to the work and efforts of IAM under her able leadership.
We commend IAM's work in addressing emergencies and its efforts in various fields such as return and readmission, regular pathways, counter migrant smuggling and trafficking. Given the fact that human mobility deserves better understanding and governance, we would like to underline the importance in strengthening flexibility and operational agility of the organization. They are essential parts of our responses to current challenges we face. In this regard, let me extend our gratitude to IAM and donor countries for their support after the devastating earthquakes in our country last February. 528 tons of air aid delivered by 14 cargo planes from IAM's warehouses in Accra, Manila, Nairobi, Lahore and New Delhi helped us provide timely support to those affected by the earthquake. We also applaud the smart energy logger system designed at IAM's resilience innovation facility in Gaziantep that provided clean water during the earthquakes. Madam Director General, colleagues, we would like to take this opportunity to draw your attention to another humanitarian catastrophe we have been witnessing since October 7th. Without doubt, loss of civilian lives is unacceptable, be it in Israel or in Palestine. Striking hospitals, schools, residential areas, places of worship, refugee camps are also outrageous. There can be no justification for deprivation of 2.3 million Gazans of food, water, medicine, electricity and fuel. Given the unprecedented dire humanitarian situation, unhindered flow of humanitarian assistance into Gaza must be ensured. It is the collective responsibility of the international community to put an end to the suffering in Gaza and send further humanitarian assistance. Madam Chairperson, indeed IAM has been a valuable partner of Turkey for nearly two decades. We have benefited and continue to benefit from the experience and expertise of the organization. Our active contribution to the Global Compact on Migration is a telltale sign of the importance we attach to our cooperation. We are also one of the active members of the Champion Countries Initiative. Taking this opportunity, allow me to reiterate our support to you, Madam Director General, as the coordinator of the UN Network on Migration. Excellencies, for centuries, Turkey has been home to those who fled from oppression and instabilities just like today. While hosting the largest refugee population in the world, almost 4 million refugees and asylum seekers, we are also determined to continue our efforts to combat migrant smuggling and to manage irregular migration. We identified nearly 220,000 irregular migrants and apprehended almost 9,000 migrant smugglers only this year. Today, over 3.2 million Syrians live in our country. There is no doubt that expecting Turkey to shoulder this responsibility alone is neither sustainable nor realistic. We need to work together to find durable solutions for refugees. Focusing more on resettlement and voluntary returns can be significant first steps. We believe that stabilization on the ground is necessary for the voluntary return of returns of Syrians. Turkey strictly complies with the principle of non refoulement and no one is forced to return. So far, over 600,000 Syrians have returned to the secured and stabilized areas that Turkey freed from the hold of terrorism of PKK, YPG, SDG and Daesh. Further joint housing projects will support the voluntary return of nearly 1 million people. Madam Director General, Excellencies, migration is the human story and an integral aspect of our lives. We should continue to further our efforts in addressing migration-related issues by strengthening our cooperation globally. In this respect, we deem IAM, UN Migration Agency, as an indispensable partner. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Finland, Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I would like to warmly congratulate you and the Bureau for your election and wish you all success in your important work. Uh, Madam Chair, Director General, uh, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, uh, Finland aligns itself with the statement of the European Union and its member states and the joint statement that will be delivered by Ukraine. 
I would like to start by welcoming Amy Pope uh, as the new Director General. We welcome your vision, the people-centered, data-driven approach that you have outlined, as well as your holistic approach to tackling migrant smuggling and trafficking in persons. IOM has a unique value as a global leader on migration and as an essential part of the international humanitarian system. In this context, we want to thank IOM and its staff for the invaluable work that you do all over the world, often in extremely difficult circumstances. We welcome the proactive approach that IOM's leadership continue to have to reform and develop the organization, and we encourage you to carry on this important work. Strengthening internal mechanisms such as results-based management, human resources and risk supervision is necessary. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We stand firm to protect the principles enshrined in the international law. We must also fight racism, hatred and discrimination on any grounds, including sexual orientation or gender identity. Finland emphasizes gender responsiveness and urges IOM to strengthen its work on disability inclusion to make sure it is strategic and cuts across the whole organization. In addition to persons with disabilities, we encourage IOM to pay particular attention to the inclusive, inclusivity of migrant women, children and LGBTQI plus persons through an intersectional approach. Being sensitive to intersecting vulnerabilities and strengthening the inclusivity of IOM's work is also a way to improve its effectiveness. Finland continues to stand up for the rights of person in the most vulnerable situations, including through our domestic migrant integration policies. Finland will implement an action plan to increase the participation of underrepresented groups in working life, such as immigrant women. In closing, we want to reiterate our support to the work of IOM, and we look very much forward to continuing our excellent cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would now like to give <clears throat> the floor to the distinguished representative of Lesotho. Lesotho, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Lesotho aligns itself with a statement delivered by Rwanda on behalf of the African group. My delegation wishes to take this opportunity to congratulate you, Ambassador Stesh, and all the members of the Beru for your election. My delegation has great trust in your chairmanship and skillful leadership. We'd like to assure you of Lesotho's support throughout your tenure. We, we also wish to appreciate His Excellency, the Ambassador of Sierra Leone, the outgoing chair of the council, for his sterling leadership through his tenure. Lesotho welcomes the insightful report of the Director General. The invaluable work carried out by the IOM could not be more timelier and crucial taking into consideration the persistent dire humanitarian challenges affecting migrants, refugees, and displaced persons across the globe. The positive impact of the work of the organization cannot be overemphasized. Lesotho appreciates the new administration's inventiveness to review internal structures and processes of the organization with a view to supporting activities by member states aimed at saving lives and protecting people on the move driving solutions to displacement, and facilitating regular migration pathways. My delegation views this as a vital action as it accords with the mandate and vision of the organization. Madam Chair, new and emerging humanitarian challenges resulting from the impact of climate change are on the rise. The Sotu is also concerned with the escalating numbers of internal displacement from floods, storms, wildfires, and other related weather-related disasters as alluded to in the report of the Director General. As the impact of climate change leads to more frequent disasters, states and other actors need to intensify their strategies to mitigate the impact of climate change. It is in this context that we welcome the efforts by the IOM in developing and scaling systems that are able to efficiently meet the additional humanitarian needs, especially those brought about by the adverse effects of climate change. The IOM's critical role 
in addressing serious and complex humanitarian and migration-related challenges and offering support to states is commendable. To this end, we welcome the work done in implementing humanitarian border management activities at the Syrian and Ukrainian border, managing high numbers of internally displaced people in Somalia, and delivering aid to earthquake victims in Northwest Syrian Arab Republic, among other activities. Indeed, the IOM is sparing no effort in living up to its goal of being an organization that is fit for purpose. We also recognize the role played by the IOM in fostering partnerships with other intergovernmental organizations, such as the UNHCR, FAO, UNDP, and WFP, among other organizations. This initiative will go a long way in forging more powerful synergies in terms of resources and expertise, and thereby avoiding duplication of efforts. The interconnectedness of these organizations with different but complementary mandates in responding to humanitarian crises is fundamental. Madam Chair, my delegation supports the support that the IOM office in Geneva extends to the regional office in Pretoria and the country office in Maseru, as this enables the two offices to support the migration management priorities of my country, Lesotho. These offices have over the years helped address the sub-regional and national migration issues specific to Lesotho, including through policy development, resource mobilization, and project implementation. We thank the IOM for supporting an inter-ministerial technical meeting on the transition from the manual work permit system to automated joint resident permit or work visa issuance that was held in January this year. This initiative is part of IOM's Africa Regional Migration Plan, whose mandate is to strengthen effective labor migration management in Southern Africa. My delegation has the further honor to report of the support that the IOM extended to Lesotho in February this year with regards to activities geared towards the fight against human trafficking. Madam Chair, human trafficking is one of the prevailing menaces of our time. Even though it is not a new phenomenon, it requires new solutions over time. It is in this sense that we appreciate the IOM for supporting a coordination meeting between the civil society and the government of Lesotho with a view to enhancing coordination and cooperation among the trafficking in persons stakeholders, as they all have a critical role to play in fighting against trafficking in persons in Lesotho. At this juncture, I would like to conclude by reiterating Lesotho's support to the work and mandate of the IOM. We strongly believe that if member states and other partners could adhere to their financial obligations to the organization, this, continue, this could continue to shine a spotlight not only on the relevance and value of IOM's work, but in terms of its capability, confidence, and its voice as a leading UN agency on migration. I thank you. Thank you. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Estonia, Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you. Madam Chair, Director General, Excellencies and Distinguished Delegates, Estonia aligns itself with the statement delivered by the European Union on behalf of the EU and its member states, and with the cross-regional statement which will be delivered by Ukraine. Allow me to begin with st uh, by stating that Estonia highly values the excellent work that IOM is doing worldwide and the cooperation that we have between IOM and Estonia. Furthermore, we congratulate Ms. Amy Pope on her first IOM Council as Director General of the organization. Especially during the times of crisis and hardship, such as we are witnessing today, the role of IOM as a provider of life-saving support to so many cannot be underestimated. We are deeply distressed about the increase of people of concern to IOM around the world and the dire circumstances millions of people are facing. In this regard, I want to focus on a continuously unfolding tragedy close to us. Russia's unprovoked and illegal war of aggression against Ukraine has lasted for 21 months. 10 million people have been forced to leave their homes and find, to find safety. The work that IOM is doing to support the protection and transit of Ukrainian citizens and res residents is invaluable. It is saving lives and its continuation is indispensable. Estonia is doing its best to help by hosting Ukrainian refugees, by ensuring crucial humanitarian aid and launching reconstruction efforts with a focus on civilian sites and infrastructure. The impact of the Russian aggression continues to reach much further. 
causing energy crisis and rise in food insecurity and food prices all around the world. Today, we are witnessing Russia's and Belarus' instrumentalization of migrants as part of hybrid warfare against their neighbours. Only through international cooperation will we manage to mitigate the destabilizing effect of the war. Madam Chair, displacement and humanitarian needs in the world continue to raise due to multiple global crises, natural catastrophes and climate change. As the last year's Council, we discussed the interlinkage between climate change, food insecurity and migration, and called for a new approach. We need to apply the humanitarian development peace nexus approach to address the global challenges that we are facing. Estonia commends IOM for prioritising response to climate migration. Building resilience of communities and ensuring long-term solutions remain the key in responding to the challenge of climate-induced migration. In concluding, I would like to reiterate Estonia's appreciation and support for IOM's growing role as a global leader on migration and um, an irreplaceable partner in the international humanitarian system. I would like to thank the IOM leadership team and the staff for their dedication and professionalism. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cuba. Cuba, you have the floor. Gracias, señora Presidenta. Permítanos iniciar felicitándolas a ambas, usted y la directora general, y trasladándoles nuestro apoyo en su gestión durante este consejo y también más allá. Cuba agradece la oportunidad de dirigirse a los miembros de la organización en esta coyuntura. Consideramos que la situación en Gaza hoy es de suma preocupación y las prácticas de desplazamiento forzoso de civiles palestinos promovidas por Israel son contrarias a toda norma del derecho internacional. Esperamos que el cese al fuego temporal de Benel Permanente y que se dé curso a la ayuda humanitaria que tan urgentemente requiere el hermano pueblo palestino. Cada momento de inacción y pasividad costará más vidas de inocentes. En este sentido, quisiéramos agradecer la labor de la organización en facilitar esta ayuda humanitaria. <coughs> Señora Presidenta, la OIM desempeña un papel crucial en abordar los desafíos migratorios en un mundo cada vez más interconectado. La migración, fenómeno de alcance global, demanda de un foro como la OIM para el diálogo y para la cooperación. En este sentido, celebramos los logros alcanzados en la implementación del Pacto Mundial para una migración segura, ordenada y regular. No obstante, enfrentamos retos significativos. El informe sobre migraciones en el mundo 2023 y el reciente informe de la directora general, el cual agradecemos, revela un aumento sostenido en el número de migrantes y condiciones cada vez más precarias. Se impone abordar las causas estructurales de la migración y se vuelve esencial la cooperación internacional para revertir la pobreza, la desigualdad y la inequidad que afectan a gran parte de la población mundial y se erigen como factores de movilidad. Señora Presidenta, Directora General, la crisis económica pospandémica, los conflictos internacionales y muy particularmente el deterioro medioambiental, particularmente los efectos del cambio climático, impactan negativamente en los flujos migratorios. Este panorama se ve exacerbado por la imposición de medidas coercitivas unilaterales destinadas a agravar la situación socioeconómica de poblaciones enteras. Cuba reitera su compromiso con los objetivos del Pacto Mundial para una Migración Segura, Ordenada y Regular. A pesar de los desafíos derivados del bloqueo económico, comercial y financiero impuesto por el gobierno de los Estados Unidos. Esta política busca desalentar a los cubanos mediante privaciones y necesidades, violando flagrantemente sus derechos humanos y estimulando la migración irregular y las actividades ilegales que ésta trae consigo, como el tráfico ilegal de migrantes y la trata de personas. Señora Presidenta, Cuba aboga por un diálogo constructivo centrado en las prioridades de los migrantes. La OIM desempeña un rol protagónico en este contexto. Continuaremos trabajando a nivel nacional con otros países de la región y con la organización en favor de una migración regular, ordenada y segura. Muchas gracias.
Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Burkina Faso. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Le Burkina Faso s'associe à la déclaration prononcée par le Rwanda au nom du groupe africain et voudrait joindre sa voix à celles qui l'ont précédé pour adresser ses vives félicitations pour votre élection au poste de présidente du Conseil ainsi que les autres membres du bureau et vous souhaiter plein succès dans l'accomplissement de vos missions. Je voudrais également féliciter le président sortant, l'ambassadeur Lansana Guébrier, pour l'efficacité avec laquelle il a conduit les travaux du Conseil au cours de son mandat. À l'endroit de la directrice générale, j'exprime mes vives félicitations pour le leadership dont elle a fait montre dans la direction d'une organisation aux missions aussi grandes que complexes qu'est l'OIM. Le rapport complet qu'elle a présenté sur les activités de l'organisation met en relief les progrès réalisés et les défis qui restent à relever. Ce rapport est un appel pressant à œuvrer davantage pour répondre aux cris de détresse de millions de personnes dans le monde contraintes à migrer vers d'autres horizons. Madame la Présidente, le Burkina Faso, de par sa situation géographique, est une terre d'accueil, de transit et de destination de migrants. Conscient de cette situation, le gouvernement a adopté une stratégie de la migration et un mécanisme de renforcement pour répondre à notre ambition commune de parvenir à des migrations sûres, régulières et ordonnées en vue de l'atteinte des objectifs de développement durable. Mon pays est confronté à une insécurité due au déferlement de groupes armés terroristes qui violent les droits humains élémentaires de population et sapent tous les efforts de développement. Cette situation a entraîné une crise humanitaire sans précédent avec plus de 2 millions de déplacés internes dont la prise en charge requiert des moyens considérables. Madame la Présidente, au moment où mon pays est engagé dans une lutte acharnée contre l'extrémisme violent qui apparaît actuellement comme la cause principale de la mobilité des populations, j'appelle l'OIM à intensifier ses actions en vue de continuer d'accompagner le gouvernement burkinabé dans la prise en charge des problématiques liées à cette mobilité humaine induite par les exactions des groupes terroristes. Ma délégation estime que le mandat de l'OIM devrait prendre en compte, outre les changements climatiques, le terrorisme comme facteur multiplicateur de la mobilité humaine, et ce, en vue de parvenir à des résultats probants sur le terrain de la protection des migrants et des déplacés internes. Tout en remerciant l'OIM et les autres partenaires bilatéraux et multilatéraux pour les différents appuis, je renouvelle l'engagement du gouvernement burkinabé à œuvrer de concert avec eux pour une gestion cohérente et efficiente des migrations. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Canada. Ambassador, you have the floor. Uh, merci, Madame la Présidente. Le Canada veut exprimer ses gratitudes à l'OIM pour son engagement sans faille à aider les plus vulnérables. Nous reconnaissons et apprécions énormément les efforts de l'organisation pour apporter espoir, réconfort et stabilité à tous ceux qui se trouvent en déplacement, que ce soit par choix ou par nécessité. Madame la Présidente, le Canada se félicite des priorités de l'OIM mises de l'avant par la directrice générale. Tout d'abord, l'amélioration de l'accès aux voies de migration régulières reste un objectif partagé par le Canada et soutenu par les pactes mondiaux sur la migration et les réfugiés. Nous avons hâte de travailler avec l'OIM pour promouvoir des moyens novateurs d'améliorer les migrations régulières et ordonnées. Aussi, le Canada se félicite des investissements de l'OIM dans la gestion et l'analyse des données afin d'anticiper les pressions futures en matière de migration et de déplacement. Adopter une, at une attitude proactive à l'égard des crises et des événements internation internationaux constitue la pierre angulaire d'une gouvernance mondiale efficace. Nous attendons avec impatience d'en savoir plus sur, sur la manière dont l'OIM prévoit exploiter la richesse des renseignements disponibles. Et troisièmement, alors que les impacts du changement climatique continuent de contraindre les gens à quitter leur foyer, le Canada est impatient de collaborer à la recherche des solutions globales et de stratégies innovantes pour aider les personnes touchées par le changement climatique dans leur quête de sécurité et de dignité. Madame Chair, 
ensuring that the IOM has the right tools and governance structure to achieve these priorities, while also maintaining the capacity to be nimble and responsive to the course of crises faced by the international community are crucial during this period of organizational transition. Canada welcomes the findings of the MOPAN's recent assessment on governance and programming. We commend the IOM's commitment to improving all aspects of its governance, while concurrently maintaining its essential response capacity. As a co-institutional lead with the kingdoms of Belgium and the Netherlands, we thank all those who supported the process and look forward to the organization's response to the assessment's findings. As we work in concert with the international community to impact change, Canada reaffirms its commitment to fostering inclusivity, diversity, and humanitarian values in all contexts and environments. In closing, Canada would like to express gratitude for IOM's support to resettle 40,000 vulnerable Afghans since August 2021. We are proud that these Afghans have found safety and are now building new lives in Canada and making important contributions to their communities. I'd also like to acknowledge the IOM staff's tireless efforts in facilitating and promoting safe, regular and orderly migration and in providing timely humanitarian assistance. These are essential components of a compassionate, pragmatic and equitable global community. In an era where humanity faces extreme displacement and mobility challenges and crises, the IOM's unwavering dedication to preserving and promoting the dignity and agency of migrants and the displaced is not just commendable, but indispensable for a better future. I thank you. Thank you very much. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Vietnam. Madam Chair, I would like to join other delegations in warmly congratulating you as the Chair of the Council and newly uh, elected members of the Council Bureau and uh, Her Excellency Amipo on the assumption of the position of the Director General of the IOM. I firmly believe that under the able leadership of the Director General and the Council Bureau, our session will continue to advance the work of the IOM of promoting regular, safe, and orderly uh, migration. Madam Chair, Director General, Vietnam highly appreciates IOM's leading role in addressing migration challenges and strengthening one management of migration to make migration work for all. We also acknowledge the efforts by the IOM in its role as the coordinator and the secretariat of the United Nations Network on Migration. This is the fourth year Vietnam has implemented the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, GCM, with concrete programs under our national plan, as well as concrete plans of relevant ministries and local authorities. Vietnam has also actively participated in the four-year review of the GCM implementation and is currently preparing for the second midterm review next year. Vietnam thanks the IOM for its invaluable support for our implementation of the GCM with the annual review mechanism jointly established by Vietnam and the IOM. The two sides have also discussed in depth to find solutions and direction to enhance the implementation of the GCM Ocean's goals while taking into account Vietnam's situation. The IOM has also assisted Vietnam in several programs to improve migration management capacity, notably the third edition of the migration profi profile for the period 2017 to 2022 and the implementation of the Asian Migration Program Framework for the period of 2023-2025, these important support and cooperation have contributed significantly to the realization of the GCM at the national and regional levels, enhanced the role of migration in sustainable development, and promoted the protection of migrants. Madam Chair, Director General, Vietnam shares concerns of challenges of migration, especially 
the fact that online fraud related to illegal migrant smuggling and human trafficking is becoming an increasingly serious challenge for Vietnam and other countries. For example, in the case of 303 Sri Lankan citizens in distress at sea in our region, many of these people are victims of migrant smuggling. Regarding this case, the IOM, Vietnam, and relevant organizations have coordinated timely and effectively in providing them humanitarian assistance during 2022-2023. Madam Chair, Director General, as we have passed the halfway point in the journey to implement SDGs, including migration-related SDG targets, and we are approaching the second midterm review of the GCM implementation, we would like to propose the following recommendations. First, we should maintain a cooperative and multilateral approach to address migration issues with the IOM plays the central role in strengthening global migration management based on GCM pillars. Second, we should thoroughly assess and review the challenges to migration that are currently emerging in various regions, including the issues of climate change, as we are discussing in the high-level meeting, to identify priority measures for promoting cooperation to resolve uh, migration challenges in all aspects, especially challenges related to technology and climate change. Third, we should continue to promote the practical implementation of the GCM on global scale. We encourage the IOM to continue to strengthen its role as coordinator, helping to connect and build partnership in implementing the GCM, especially between countries of origin and countries of destination to create a truly safe migration corridor for the legitimate rights and interests of migrants. Before concluding my statement, I would like to reaffirm Vietnam's full support to the efforts by the IOM and its member states, particularly the efforts of the Director General to improve the IOM's efficiency. We believe the long-term partnership between <coughs> Vietnam and IOM will continue to thrive in the uh, coming years and would like uh, to sincerely thank the IOM and its staff, including the IOM mission in Vietnam for those joint efforts. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ambassador. So I have three more um, speakers on my list. And before today, concluding today's meeting, um, I would like to give back the floor, of course, to the DG to comment on your interventions. And with this having said, I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Armenia. Madam Chairperson, Director General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we congratulate you, Madam Chairperson, and members of the Bureau on your election. We would also like to extend our heartfelt congratulations to Director General Ms. Amy Pope on her first appearance at the Council in her new capacity. We wish her all the best in her endeavors and would like to assure of our continued support. Armenia continues to benefit from the cooperation with the IOM. In 2022, after major institutional reforms, the Ministry of Internal Affairs were established in Armenia, which also includes the Migration and Citizenship Service. The reforms consolidated all migration-related structures under a single umbrella. The reforms in the course of the last years, Armenia has also largely digitalized migration management. Since 2020, the Armenian government has implemented the large-scale housing programs by providing housing purchase certificates to the refugees forcibly displaced by Azerbaijan in 1988-1992. According to the last census held in the Soviet Union, more than 500,000 Armenians were living in Soviet Azerbaijan. Today, there are none. Moreover, Azerbaijan continues its policy of ethnic cleansing against the Armenians of nagorno karabakh and has forcibly displaced 150,000 Armenians from their ancestral homes through the use of military force in 2020 and 2023. 
as well as through a nine-month-long inhumane blockade imposed against the population of Nagorno-Karabakh. Two months ago, the IOM reported from the ground that many of those who sought refuge in Armenia undertook arduous journeys, often walking for days and finding shelter in caves and basements, enduring extremely challenging conditions. There were reports of malnutrition, particularly among the elderly and among children. On November 17, the International Court of Justice adopted a binding order on Azerbaijan to ensure that persons who have left Nagorno-Karabakh and who, wi who wish to return are able to do so in a safe, unimpeded, and expeditious manner. Also, a UN human rights expert reported last week from Armenia that he, and I quote, observed the pain and urgent needs of the displaced population and immense efforts by the authorities to address their basic and urgent needs." End of quote. However, the humanitarian crisis of this magnitude certainly requires comprehensive international assistance. Toward that end, the Armenia Emergency Refugee Response Plan was launched in October, bringing together 60 partners, including a number of the UN agencies. We once again appeal to and count on the international support in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Germany. Thank you, Madam Chair, Director General, Excellencies. Also, Germany aligns itself with the statement of the European Union. But first of all, let me stress that Germany strongly condemns the unprecedented terrorist attack carried out by Hamas and Israel. And we are extremely concerned by the deepening humanitarian crisis in Gaza. International humanitarian law must be adhered, adhered to by all parties at all times. We welcome the negotiated release of some hostages. However, Hamas must release all hostages and refrain from abusing civilians as human shields. We express our pain at seeing so many innocent lives destroyed on and since 7th of October. At IOM, DG Pope, our priorities are in line with yours, fostering regular migration as well as the nexus of climate change and human mobility. We are facing an extremely tense migration situation in Germany. Since 20 2022, Germany has taken in nearly 1.5 million refugees, about 1 million of them fleeing the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine. And we have seen an increase in illegal, in illegal migrant smuggling, both in irregular entries and in applications for asylum. Some statistics will set new records by the end of this year. Irregular migration is a major topic in Germany. We have to reduce irregular entries also by improving structures of for regular migration and finalizing the common European asylum systems reform. As only about half of all asylum applications are successful, the area of returns is vital. The focus should be on voluntary return and sustainable reintegration, an area in which IOM has been a long-term trusted partner. At the same time, attracting skilled migrant workers that our labor markets urgently need and securing, and securing legal pathways for regular migration remains a key challenge. We welcome that IOM intends to expand its programs for the promotion of regular migration. Germany has to become more attractive for labor migrants from third countries by offering pre-departure measures for migrants and refugees to better prepare for their future in Germany. We thank IOM for its assistance in this regard. We must also continue to strive for solutions for displaced persons. We are grateful to IOM and its staff members for always having taken immediate and effective solutions to those in need. With the harsh drought over three years in the Horn of Africa and the devastating floods in Libya this September, we have seen that climate change destroys people's livelihoods and forces people to leave their homes. Working on human mobility in the context of climate change is a priority for us. We appreciate that you, DG Pope, made this nexus a top priority and we support your leadership. Neither the effects of the climate crisis nor migration experiences are gender blind. Therefore, we need to strengthen our focus on the gender nexus in both our policy and programming efforts. 
Good coordination between IOM and UNHCR is especially important. As Chair of the IOM Council and the UNHR Executive Committee, we will be committed to this objective. Germany values IOM as a reliable partner. We have increased our humanitarian assistance funding to IOM fivefold to almost 100 million euros since 2020. With IOM's budget growing, we appreciate your focus, DG Pope, on strengthening IOM's risk management systems and internal oversight. Last but not least, we are proud that we hosted last week the official launch of the IOM Global Data Institute in Berlin and hope it will develop into the central migration data center within the UN family. Once again, DG Pope, let me express my government's readiness to support you, your staff, and your work going forward. Thank you. Thank you. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Algeria, Ambassador, you have the floor. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Tout d'abord, je m'acquitte avec plaisir de la courtoisie élémentaire pour vous féliciter vous-même, Madame l'Ambassadeur d'Allemagne, ainsi que les excellents membres élus de votre bureau. Vous avez notre plein soutien pour le succès de votre mandat. Je ne manquerai pas non plus de féliciter votre prédécesseur, l'Ambassadeur du Sierra Leone comme je remercie le secrétariat pour son dévouement et à sa tête la directrice générale, première femme à la tête de l'OIM, entre autres pour l'excellent rapport qui nous donne une idée exhaustive des activités réalisées et des priorités de l'organisation. La transparence des programmes favorise un appui plus consistant en termes de donations. Nous attendons avec intérêt le rapport final qui sera soumis au comité permanent en juin 2024. Ma délégation s'aligne sur les déclarations présentées par les groupes d'appartenance régionale et soumet à titre national les remarques suivantes. Nous félicitons Madame la Directrice Générale pour la déclaration conjointe avec d'autres chefs d'organisation à Genève pour venir en aide aux civils palestiniens qui sont la cible d'un réel génocide. Plus de 15 000 personnes, dont la majorité constituée d'enfants et de femmes, ont été froidement liquidées la destruction des hôpitaux, des écoles et des lieux de culte en violation des règles du droit international humanitaire et de la dignité humaine. Permettez-moi en cette journée de internationale de lutte contre la violence faite aux femmes d'avoir une pensée à toutes les femmes civiles de la région qui sont tombées sous les armes. Madame la Présidente, compte tenu de sa position de carrefour géographique pour être à la fois au cœur du Maghreb et aux frontières extérieures de la CDAO et à celles de l'Union européenne, mon pays fait face à des flux migratoires importants causés par l'instabilité politique, la pauvreté et les changements climatiques dans plusieurs pays voisins et au-delà. C'est pourquoi l'Algérie déploie des efforts considérables pour venir en aide aux populations locales des pays d'origine en favorisant l'option du développement local. C'est ainsi qu'il y a de nombreux projets de coopération, notamment la réalisation de forages pour rendre l'eau accessible, des écoles et des structures de soins médicaux. L'Algérie, en étroite collaboration avec les pays d'origine, consent également des efforts financiers considérables pour mener une grande campagne multidimensionnelle pour lutter contre les trafics et les passeurs. Mon pays qui plaide pour une approche qui respecte le droit international, les lois nationales et surtout la dignité humaine, lance l'appel au partage des responsabilités et des engagements de toute la communauté internationale. Les effets des changements climatiques deviennent une réalité de nos jours en Algérie aussi. Les incendies, les inondations, la désertification sont devenus des risques et menaces permanentes. C'est pourquoi la mobilité humaine cherche, si j'ose dire, à s'acclimater. L'appui de l'OIM et des autres partenaires est crucial à cet égard. Il faudrait, à notre avis, que l'OIM soit le point focal pour le suivi des politiques et programmes et autres mesures préconisées par les déclarations adoptées ici ou là. Et j'ai en tête le, la COP28 qui se profile à l'horizon. L'idée de la mobilité humaine constitue peut-être l'une des pistes à envisager pour assurer une meilleure gestion des flux migratoires. Cependant, mon pays considère que cette initiative ne réglera pas le problème dans sa globalité et pourrait même accentuer l'état de pauvreté des pays d'origine de migrants en les privant de leur capacité nationale. 
Mon pays contribue à la gouvernance mondiale de la migration, notamment pour lutter contre le trafic des migrants, la traite des personnes, le terrorisme, le racisme et le discours haineux. L'Algérie, loin de toute agitation médiatique, a beaucoup avancé dans ces domaines, en partenariat avec les différentes structures concernées. Pour conclure, Madame la Présidente, permettez-moi de souligner l'importance de distinguer les différences entre les situations de migrants, de réfugiés et de personnes déplacées. Les causes, les aspirations et les solutions sont différentes. Mon pays insiste sur la nécessité d'un traitement adéquat et est en parfait respect de la légalité internationale en vue d'assurer la meilleure prise en charge possible dans le strict respect du mandat de chaque organisation internationale et en étroite collaboration avec les pays concernés. Merci beaucoup pour votre aimable attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And as promised, the last word for today goes to the DG, and thank you very much uh, to our interpreters for your patience. DG, you have the floor. Thank you very much um, to all of our member states um, who have engaged thoughtfully um, in providing feedback as, we, as you reflect on both um, the work that we do in your countries and around the world, as well as um, my statement summarizing that work. Um, I, I don't have time to um, reply to every member state, but I want to address a couple of key themes um, that I heard emerge from your comments. First and foremost, it's to recognize the work of the champions uh, of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration and, um, and address the ways in which countries are um, identifying innovative approaches, new policies, taking stock of what's working and adjusting what's not working in addressing every single objective that is included in the Global Compact uh, for Migration. Um, I want to reassure all of our member states that those objectives remain critical to our work, um, both as IOM, but also in my role as the coordinator for the network on migration and in our engagement with, with our partner agencies in the UN system, but also um, in taking a very firm and um, inclusive approach that recognizes the impact of civil society, of diaspora, um, of other community groups that will enable us to achieve a much more comprehensive 360-degree approach to migration. I also want to recognize those governments who are not yet champions, but nonetheless are continuing to be advocates for a much more inclusive approach. Um, if, if you don't mind, if I call out a couple that have done some really interesting work, of course, the Philippines, uh, Morocco, and India have all played a key role. Turkey, which is um, uh, advocating for more pathways to address some of the issues, even as it has um, played host to many, many uh, migrants and refugees from around the world. Um, the work that we're seeing from Australia um, and, and um, countries like Germany, uh, as well as within the EU and Canada, who are increasingly identifying new and innovative ways of providing regular pathways, whether it is on the humanitarian side, whether it is to ensure family reunification, whether it is to create labor pathways, be they circular labor pathways or more, more permanent labor, labor pathways, or whether it is to achieve pathways for communities in need of international protection, work that we are doing with our partners at the UNHCR and will continue to do with them. We recognize, of course, that the first and foremost, the most um, durable pathway that now exists is um, refugee status. And so I want to reiterate a commitment that I have made to many of you um, in previous encounters, which is that we will work closely with our sister agency because we see there is a continuum of movement. We want to make sure that even as we establish these new pathways for people who are on the move, that we don't take away the existing pathways that may exist for persons who are eligible for refugee protections. At the same time, we recognize that because there are insufficient pathways um, for persons um, who are vulnerable but will not qualify under the 1951 Convention, the work that many governments are now doing to create those pathways is absolutely critical. 
I also want to um, uh, recognize what I've heard from many of you is the importance of addressing the impact of climate change on human mobility and, and approaching the issue from a comprehensive, people-centered, data-driven angle. Um, recognizing that increasingly if we are to use our resources which are being stretched across many, many different humanitarian crises, if we're to use those resources effectively, using data to guide the delivery of those resources is absolutely critical, and then learning from our approach so that we are able to either scale up or pivot to other approaches that may work more effectively. So that is um, something that we will be increasingly doing within our organization, and we appreciate um, your support for that work. I also want to say um, a particular thank you to those countries who, by um, virtue of their geography, are facing uh, additional pressures from migration um, and, and flows of people, whether it's internally within their countries or across borders. And I'd, I'd like to note again that this is um, uh, particularly in the face of insecurity, of instability, of concerns about extremism, concerns about human trafficking. The work that we do to support your governments, the work that collectively the inter international communities put in place to support those governments and those communities who are hosting large numbers of migrants is actually work that is relevant for the global community as a whole providing the capacity for a neighboring country to host migrants actually creates a stabilizing effect across regions. So I want to recognize that if you are one of these countries that is hosting a large number of migrants or who is facing the impacts of insecurity, uh, whether it is uh, Cote d'Ivoire or Burkina Faso, um, that it is critical that we as a global community build out programs in support of countries so that we build more stability um, regionally. I'd finally like to um, recognize, um, again, that, that there's a lot of innovation that is happening here. And this innovation is absolutely critical. It won't all uh, necessarily have the impact that we hope, but it's critical that we stop continuing to do exactly the same thing we've done decade after decade after decade if we hope to see some real meaningful change. So I encourage and I'm heartened to hear this uh, support for a cooperative, multilateral, inclusive approach, an approach that brings in women, an approach that brings in young people, an approach that brings in persons um, from the LGBTQI community, an approach that recognizes the um, vulnerabilities of certain communities, but also recognizes the strength of including those communities as we build out solutions. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge that I've heard loud and clear the um, clear the mandate that we as an international organization with an increasing amount of resources to support increasing numbers of people on the move must do so with a, a highest amount of transparency, the highest amount of uh, oversight and compliance while not compromising our ability to be agile and responsive. So we do look to you um, for your support, whether it is financial, whether it is um, in terms of best practices, whether it is in terms of building partnerships with the private sector so that we can do that effectively and to a standard that meets your expectations, but more importantly, allows us to deliver the best services, the best support to the communities who are most in need. I'd finally like to conclude um, by saying that that's what this is all about. Um, while we have the tremendous honor to be um, serving you, our member states, we do so in order to serve vulnerable people around the world, people who don't often have a voice, people who don't often have a vote, people who are often the subject of vilification or um, who are 
many times treated as less than human. So the work that we do here together is absolutely critical to make sh making sure that we recognize the human rights, the human dignity of all people, that we do what the United Nations was meant to do from the very beginning. Um, and in doing so, we ultimately leave no one behind, but more importantly, enable the tremendous human growth, the tremendous human uh, capacity that is with migration. So I will leave you at that because um, 13 minutes now into your time and I look forward to tomorrow's conversation. Please join, it's a high level meeting. Uh, we have some really good engagement and um, from my own personal point of view, we have a really tremendous global goodwill ambassador that we will introduce to you uh, tomorrow in tomorrow's morning session. Suspense. <laughs> Thank you very much, DG. Thank you very much, everybody. This afternoon's meeting is now coming to an end. And this general debate will continue on Wednesday morning. Tomorrow morning, <clears throat> as stated, um, we will start at 10 a.m. And uh, we will start with agenda item 11, which is the high-level segment focused on climate impact on human mobility, a global call for solution. And with this, we are at the end of today's um, <clears throat> session, meeting, however you want to call it. I wish you a wonderful evening. See you tomorrow.